here at Minute Maid Park. Number three, LSU. Number 15, Texas. As we turn the calendar to the month of March, usually we're talking about March Madness with basketball in the NCAA, but we've got some madness tonight at Minute Maid Park. It is filled, the lower bowls, the club level. It's all purple and gold and burnt orange as we're ready for the battle of the Tigers and the Longhorns. Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Todd Callis alongside Jeff Blum. Lumber, you're a guy who played <laughs> big-time college baseball. You must be getting revved up right now. I am getting a little revved up, and it's great to see both teams well represented here at Minute Maid Park. They obviously love playing here, but this is just a preview for what's going to happen next season, and we get first shot at it right here tonight. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun tonight. Now, for LSU, they have one of the best hitters in the nation coming yeah, into the season. Yeah. Their third baseman, Tommy White. Yeah, and he's really the leader of this ball club. This team won the national championship last year with Tommy White as a sophomore. They obviously lose Skeens and Cruz, two of the leaders of last year's ball club, but they are going to rely heavily on the junior third baseman, Tommy White. He has great bat-to-ball skills. You can see the batting average at 343, but driving in runs, who's going to get on base ahead of him so that he can drive these guys in because he's a key RBI guy in this lineup? And the other third baseman in this game is a guy who's been driving in a lot of runs. Jared Thomas has been setting the table, and then Peyton Powell for UT has been driving them in. He has been hammering the baseball, and this is another guy that Coach Pierce loves. He has become the leader of this ball club, redshirt senior. But how about 18 runs batted in in just eight games played? So you get guys in front of him, he will put his bat on the baseball, sprays the ball all over the place, but he still has some great power. Two of the key hitters in these lineups. We are ready for baseball. We've got two great arms tonight as well on the mound. We've got LeBaron Johnson Jr. going for University of Texas, and we have Luke Holman going for LSU. First pitch and starting lineups next. For LSU, Paxton Kling will lead off in center field. Tommy White at third base. Brady Neal, a couple home runs Wednesday. The catcher, DH is Hayden Travinsky. Josh Pearson is in right field batting fifth. Jared Jones over at first base. Steven Milan, the freshman second baseman. Mac Bingham in left. And Michael Braswell, the third, bats ninth and plays short. They are going to be going up against big right hander LeBaron Johnson, six foot four right hander. This season is off to a great start. 13 innings. He's only given up seven hits, two earned runs, and 14 strikeouts in those 13 innings. He is going to sit at 92 to topping out possibly at 96 plus. Big right hander backs that fastball up with a slider and a split. It was almost one year ago today when he faced this LSU team in Austin. Coach David Pierce called it his coming out party. He went five innings on a Tuesday night in Austin. Only allowed three hits, no runs. He struck out nine. And he would go on to have a fine season in 2023 to the point where he is the Big 12 preseason pitcher of the year. 
as he gets ready for start number three on the season. March Madness baseball style. This crowd is ready to go. This was supposed to be a 705 Central start. Instead, with the length of the earlier games, it's an 805 Central. So an extra hour of pre-gaming for these fans. And the first pitch is a strike from LeBaron Johnson Jr. to Paxton Kling. We're underway. See the numbers for Paxton Kling leads the team with that 409 average. Also has a 625 on base percentage for the Tigers. Next pitch is off the plate. It's 101. Tigers come in with a record of eight and one. The Longhorns come in with a record of seven and one. Two of the top 15 ranked teams in the nation. One, one pitch is a little bit down. It's two and one. Aaron Johnson Jr. out of Jacksonville. His mom, his dad, his sister all flew in for this start here in Houston at Minute Maid Park. 2-1 pitch is a swing and a miss. It's 2-2. Two two. Nice little two-seam action on that fastball at 94 miles an hour. I would imagine even for these two ball clubs, as many as intense games that they've played in their careers, their heartbeat's probably a little elevated right now. First time they've really had a chance to match up against some powerhouse teams. It's sharply towards the hole, backhanded by Flores. His off-balance throw not in time. Great try by the Texas shortstop, but Paxton Kling with an infield hit to start this game. Good job by Kling putting that slider in play. Off the bat, I thought it was going to be a base hit pretty easily with Kling's speed. But you're right, TK. You're going to see it right here. Flores moving well to his right. Eerily reminiscent of one of his coaches, Troy Tularitsky. Tulo has really helped out Flores as he has had a great start to his season. Here's Tommy White. A lot of buzz in the crowd with him stepping to the plate. Call him Tommy Tanks. He was the ACC Freshman of the Year when he was at North Carolina State. And then the last year, all he did was drive in 105 runs in his first year at LSU. That led the nation. Next pitch just misses, says Seth. Buckminster, the crew chief and home plate umpire. Doug Williams, Eric Gache, and Ron Teague, your other three umpires. And it's 2 0, oh, dangerous count for the power hitting third baseman, Tommy White. He has three steals on the year in three attempts. Yeah, you better be 100% sure if you're going to steal that bag with Tommy White at the plate. Because he can drive you in from first. LSU in Houston for six consecutive days. They got here on Monday. They had a workout Tuesday night. Played a game at Reckling Park against Rice. On the Rice University campus Wednesday. And now the three games over the weekend. Swing and a miss on a 2-0 pitch. It's 2-1. and one. Give LBJ... Some credit challenging Tommy Wright right there. You know what's interesting about LSU being here for a week basically in Houston or LSU West is the fact that this is the first time that Texas has been on the road all season. How about that? Guys from Austin driving in last Ooh. night getting a workout at the stadium here at Minute Maid Park. Next pitch is a swing and a miss. Tommy White took a big rip. It's two and two. Yeah, you can see LeBaron checking out that radar gun, trying to figure out how fast that last pitch was getting it past Tommy White. It was at 95. LBJ, LeBaron Johnson Jr. with a 2 2 count and another pickoff attempt. Not only is LBJ the preseason pitcher of the year in the Big 12, he's the reigning pitcher of the week in the Big 12. Coming off a great performance against Cal Poly, he went eight innings of two hit shutout baseball in his last start on Friday night against Cal Poly. In fact, the Longhorns did not allow a run in that entire weekend series. 2 2 pitch, staying alive is White with a foul ball. Keep, keep an eye on White. He actually, for being a power type guy, he does a good job of putting the ball in play and having good two strike at bats. Only three strikeouts and 41 plate appearances this season. It's right up on that plate. And he goes after the high fastball. 
LeBaron Johnson Jr. strikes out Tommy White, and that's the first out of the inning. Well, we know what LeBaron Johnson's going to go to when he needs to get that swing and miss. That fastball is working effectively, and it was also interesting to see Galvan, the catcher, setting up inside. That's exactly where he wanted that. Now the left hand hitting catcher Brady Neal another check on first. No limit on the amount of pickoff attempts in the college game. There is no. Two pickoff maximum like there is in the major leagues. We've seen LBJ very aware of Paxton Kling over at first base Brady Neal. Coming off a huge game on Wednesday, hit two bombs against the Rice Owls, and that 16 to 4 win on Wednesday has 11 runs batted in, tied for the team lead. LSU is blessed with three <laughs> catchers that could be everyday catchers at the best programs in the country, but they all happen to be on the same team. I was a little shocked to hear that because it feels like in the major leagues and throughout some of the minor league systems, catchers, if you have one, you covet that catcher. But Jay Johnson has three to choose from, trying to find DH spots, trying to move one of them over to first base, trying to create some at bats, but that's pretty impressive. And one of the other three catchers is on deck is the DH, Hayden Chervinsky. And you've got Alex Malazzo, who's a primary catcher a couple of years ago for LSU. So now the count's three and one. Runner on first base. We'll see if there's action here. The first base coach, Mark Wanaka, with a word for Paxton Kling before this pitch. Closer play at first. Eric Thomas, the first baseman, can also play center field. Yeah, Kling isn't exactly diving back to the back. He's been standing up the entire time. A couple of close plays, but still has yet to get that uniform dirty. Good moment right here for Brady Neal. You talked about those two bombs out at Rice. Feeling pretty good against a very good pitcher. Might get a challenge fastball right here. There goes the runner. The pitch is a high strike. The throw is on the money, but late. Kling steals second. He's four for four on the year and stolen bases. Well, they got the pitch he wanted to run on, which is interesting. 3 1, usually a fastball count, but Kling didn't care. Took off and took it. Had those feet moving. Got into stride, did a good job sliding to the outside part of the bag, too. Now full count delivery to Neal, trying to hold up. He goes too far. They're going to have to make the play to first. Galvan throws to first for the putout. So coming back after being down the count, Baron Johnson Jr. picks up strikeout number two. Might have been a little bit of the split there, 3-2. He has an excellent, excellent splitter. We talked about the accolades that LeBaron Johnson comes into the season with and how to, about him going through arguably the two best hitters in this lineup right now. Still has Travinsky to deal with trying to get out of this inning. Fourth year at UT. He's a redshirt junior. They thought he might be gone in last year's draft. They were excited to bring him back. David Pierce having a few guys that he was happy to bring back that keeping these guys means a lot to us and LBJ was right at the top of the list of guys they were happy that didn't go on to play professional baseball. Oh one pitch off the plate one and one. Little check swing, and it's a foul at the plate. Travinsky never left the box as that ball hit him on the leg on the check swing. So that'll be a strike on the foul ball. It's one and two. Third base umpire Ron Teague coming in. Home plate umpire didn't react. He just figured it was a check swing, but maybe caught 
Maybe caught the front of the shoe. Yep. Travinsky, who decided to play it a little bit better after he realized that would have been an out. <laughs> Definitely hit him on the sole of that front left foot. David Pierce wanting an explanation, and he'll head back to the dugout with a 1 2 count on Travinsky. Travinsky is a grad student out of Shreveport. Has started. All 10 games now for LSU. Back in that DH spot again in Jay Johnson's lineup. Pitched down two and two. When LBJ faced LSU last year, they were on a roll offensively. They scored 69 runs in their first six games before that game in Austin. This year the LSU offense even though they put up a big number Wednesday some of that was the conditions of the game there was a lot of wind blown fly balls that fell in for hits but they haven't quite clicked offensively that like the way they think they can. It's still a big challenge for LeBaron Johnson Junior. Three two pitch is a little bit of low ball four that'll be a walk to put runners on first and second. LSU making LBJ work hard here in the first inning. Yeah, that's immediately what I was thinking about too. That was a great at bat by Travinsky, just kind of settling in, kind of went nose stride and just laid off some pitches down out of the zone to take that walk. But you're right, TK. 23 pitches now in this game for LeBaron Johnson. Of course, LSU would like to push a run across, but at the same time, taxing that right arm early is kind of nice. A week ago he threw 100 pitches and got through eight innings against Cal Poly. Now here's Josh Pearson. Pearson swings through the first delivery on one. Next pitch up, it's 1 1. No, I agree with you in the sense that LSU is still trying to probably find their way as far as the offense is concerned. A foul that is going to drift, trying to blow back into play, but it actually lands in the second row. Wind is, or the roof is open, so wind can be a factor tonight here at Minute Maid Park. No, I agree with you, and you're right. Last time LSU played was out at Rice, and the wind was howling, but it's a little bit different story in here at Minute Maid Park. The roof is open tonight. The flags will tell you that the wind, maybe at that second level, are pushing out towards left field, but at the same time, Having played here with that roof open a lot of times it has a tendency to push the baseball back towards the playing surface So don't give up on that if you're a corner outfielder or infielder on a foul ball that Last foul ball almost ended up in play now one two and a good take on a pitch outside and low two and two So here in the first inning Aaron Johnson jr. Up to 27 pitches Pearson stays alive. Making Pier making Johnson work, and he's still around that 95 mile an hour velocity with the fastball. After that fastball in, might be a good time for that split, trying to get that swing and miss. Get out of this inning. Well, stay with the heater. 96. Firm fastball, but wide. Both runners will be off with a 3 2 pitch with two outs. Kling off of second, Travinsky off first. As Johnson will deliver the 30th pitch of the first inning. That'll be a foul ball and out of play. We'll do it again. Flags blowing out towards left, but as Blummer mentioned, the wind can bounce around a little bit. Once it gets underneath. Call third strike. 
Seth Buckminster said it caught the inside edge, and a long inning comes to a close. A hit, a walk, two men left on. Here's a Texas Longhorn starting lineup. Jared Thomas and Peyton Powell have been great at the top. So is Jalen Flores, the three hitter. Porter Brown, Rylan Galva Galvan is the five hitter. Max Ballou in right field. Casey Borba DH has hit seven. Jack O'Dow, the second baseman. And Will Gasparino bats ninth in center field. Some more fuel on the mound, too. Luke Holman's got a good heater. And how about his start to the season? Two starts, 12 and a third, 18 strikeouts. Only one walk in those 12 and a third. He's yet to allow an earned run. So an exciting matchup for the Texas Longhorns against this Tiger who has yet to give up an earned run. Aaron Johnson Jr. 31 first inning pitches Holman getting ready to go in his third start will face five left hand hitters in that lineup including the first two Jared Thomas and Peyton Powell. Thomas off to a great start he's hitting 581 he's got a 658 on base percentage. And he leads a team with an OPS just three points shy of 1500 in the early start of the season. First pitch swinging and fouling went out of play 0 and 1. See the numbers for Thomas on the year. On base percentage batting average OPS stolen bases and runs scored all. The team leader. You hit 581. To start the season, you don't feel like you've ever made it out. <laughs> 18 hits and 31 at bats. Man, it's video game type stuff. 658 on base percentage on base. <laughs> basically, two out of every three times he goes up there. Thomas is a sophomore out of Waxahachie, Texas. Plays first base and center field. Whatever is best for that given night's lineup for UT. All third strike dotted him up on the inside edge. Jared Thomas goes down looking. Luke Holman has a strikeout to start this game. Peter at 94 on the inside corner. That is exactly the location that Neil wanted. And Holman dressed that up beautifully to put down a guy that's hitting close to 600. So Holman will now face the number two hitter Peyton Powell. We talked about him before the game how the third baseman for the Longhorns. The Tigers were. Happy with who they had coming back in terms of the rotation but whenever you lose a guy who's the number one overall pick in the MLB draft like LSU did with Paul Skeens you are looking. To try and fill a huge void. Well, Holman was a guy who was transferring from Alabama, and there were a few teams interested in Luke Holman. LSU ended up having him transfer over. He had visited University of Tennessee, Mississippi State, but he really felt at home in his visit to Baton Rouge, and that's why he is a Tiger now, pitching on a Friday night against the University of Texas. 
It was a beautiful breaking ball in that 1 1 count. That Powell way out in front. Al starting every game. One two pitch hit the other way into left center towards the gap and that is going to be down into the wall. Chasing it down is Bingham and Kling. Powell gets to second with a stand up double. Powell went to school on that previous curveball. I told you that Powell was out in front. But makes the adjustment here recognizes that spin does a good job of just staying back letting that ball travel and hammering it the other way. Hot bats at the top of this lineup for the Longhorns. Powell right behind Tom is that OPS department at the beginning of the year 1441 as that total with a double here now Jalen Flores the shortstop bats. Or as a sophomore. Takes one off the plate for a ball, 1 0. Last year, Flores didn't play a whole lot. 29 starts, batted 175. David Pierce said he has made a big, as big a jump as anyone in the program from one year to the next. As it fouls this one back. Troy Tulowitzki, who Blummer mentioned last half inning, a big part of that transition. Or as kind of a taller shortstop at six foot two, like Tulo, like yourself. Yeah, it's not easy for guys that size, but I also thought it was interesting, you know, hearing Coach Pierce talk about Flores said he's made huge gains from his freshman year, not just on the field, but also in the weight room, putting on 20 pounds. But yeah, playing with a frame that size, you've got to play a little bit different short shortstop. It's a quick twitch position, and you have to do a little bit better job of anticipating and using that body and that big frame to cover some ground. Two and one the count. He shoots that foul into the club deck, which is packed tonight. Which means we probably have at least 20,000 in the house. Which bodes well for a new attendance record for the weekend. Yeah, this is outstanding. The attendance record was set a couple of years ago, just shy of 54,000 for three days. Swing and a miss, and Flores goes down on a breaking ball. That'll be strikeout number two for Holman. Well, Holman went to the slider on this pitch. We've seen the fastball and the curveball, and here the slider beautifully located. Started on that outside corner, corner, break it off the plate, get the swing and miss for the second out. Now Porter Brown will be the hitter. On a redshirt senior who started his collegiate career at TCU, was there for four years. Had a redshirt year in there and a COVID year in there. So now his second season with Texas after four years with the Horned Frogs. Want to know the count? Pitch missing up and in, 2 0. Holman pitched last Saturday. Through 80 pitches in that outing. That was against Northern Illinois. It was Jay Johnson's 100th win as the LSU head coach. Luke Holman's second win in as many starts as an LSU Tiger also defeated. Central Arkansas in his LSU debut. 3 0 the count here on Brown. And Porter takes a strike. Paint job. Brown has had better at bats here the last couple of games after a slow start for UT. Up top. Ball four. That'll put runners on first and second. So both pitchers. A little bit of traffic in the first inning. LeBaron Johnson Jr. would strike out three after a hit and a walk, and now hitting a walk this inning allowed by Luke Holman.
Here's the catcher, Ryland Galvan. I mentioned LSU has three catchers to choose from. Texas has been rotating their catchers back and forth. Galvan and Kimball Schusler playing every other game, basically, both guys with four starts before tonight. Pretty good taper right there. Holman wanted that first pitch breaking ball to get ahead of Galvan. Holman now at 20 pitches in the first inning, so both starters getting stretched out a little bit here in the first. Holman's going to be a guy that relies on location. He really doesn't have the jet fuel that maybe LeBaron Johnson or Paul Skeens did like they did last year. That last fastball at 94. But watch where the location is. He's a guy that's going to be pretty precise with where he locates. Start that fastball on the outside corner. It stays there. Then you see him back it up with the slider that he tried to start in the same spot and break off the plate. Galvan not biting. Last year as the number one starter at Alabama, he was second in the SEC with a 1.05 whip, so not many base runners allowed last year for the Crimson Tide. 2-2 pitch. Runner on second was breaking and then stopped, and the pitch is low, so basically the exact same scenario in the top half and the bottom half of the first. 3-2 count, two outs, runners on first and second. That was a nice stop by Brady Neal, too, to keep the runners right where they're at. Been a lot of off speed against Galvan. Allen Brown off with a pitch and a swing and a miss. Galvan chase one off the plate. And that'll do it for the Longhorns. Both pitchers with a couple of runners on strike out three in the first. Two thousand twenty four season tickets are on sale now you can catch every home run every double play and every game in the twenty twenty four season by becoming an Astros season ticket holder. You can also get access to every postseason game visit Astros dot com slash season tickets to learn more. Todd Callis Jeff Blum we are just about four weeks away from opening day a little less than that it'll be coming up in four Thursdays from now and Blumber, this is kind of it feels like a major league atmosphere tonight. There's a lot of purple and gold, maybe more so than the burnt orange we've seen tonight. Yeah, I was kind of curious to see how that played out, but there is quite a bit of the purple and gold out here. They're well represented. Everybody knows I love a big hat right there behind the dugout. <laughs> That's always nice. But yeah, this is impressive. You know, go, <laughs> going from spring training to this, it's a little I'm, I'm a little elevated right now. Yeah, it's close to two thirds 
Yeah. Tigers over Longhorn fans. It's it's impressive how many people a live here in the Houston area that went to LSU. That's true. And B made the trip from Baton Rouge for the weekend. Jared Jones leads things off for the Tigers and a 2 0 count. And just like our own Julia Morales there's probably a lot of mixed families in terms of <laughs> LSU pride and Texas pride. Yep. LSU with Julia's husband Matt the former LSU Tiger player outstanding career at LSU. Yeah there might be a reason why they're not at this game tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you try to keep it civil and public you know. Two and two the count LBJ getting ahead of or getting an even count now on Jared Jones. Although I would love to see Julia show up in purple if Texas loses. Oh, like if that was the wager. Was the yeah, yeah. Or see Matt come out to the golf course with burn orange on. That'd be wild. <laughs> Three and two the count. Bragging rights on the line. Last year the game in Austin was one day earlier on the calendar, February 28th, and it was a great game. It went all the way down to the wire. It was nothing, nothing basically for the first seven or eight innings, and then LSU scored late against the Longhorn bullpen after a great start by LeBaron Johnson Jr. 3 2 pitch, swing and a miss. LBJ has four strikeouts of the four outs tonight. I think what we're learning early on is that LBJ is not afraid to come to the inside corner. That ball actually looked like it had a little bit of two seam action on it, too. So he probably has the four seam fastball that he can ramp to 96. But if you start moving the baseball with that two seamer, at 94 under the hands of right handed hitters that's doing something. Now Steven Milam the freshman true freshman second baseman is the hitter. Milam's off to a real nice collegiate start batting 407 Blummer mentioned the spectacular play he made on the turf at Rice the other night. He is a guy from Las Cruces New Mexico who is a true freshman and his whole career his whole baseball career he's been a gamer he just goes after it, loves the game of baseball and another guy <laughs> who plays his home games here who went to LSU who's from New Mexico is his idol Alex Bregman. Pretty good guy to look up to in every sense of the word too because Alex is one of those workhorses who earns everything he gets by getting in the cage working hard. But a nice guy to kind of emulate. Island with a 3 0 count takes a strike. They call him monster. He's five foot eight, 172 pounds. He's a switch hitter, a natural lefty. And he is all up on the dish, toes on the white line. And that'll be a walk. Well, Baron Johnson Jr., who threw 31 pitches in the first inning, but worked out of trouble with three strikeouts, has a strikeout and a walk here in the second. 42 pitches in 21 balls 21 strikes for LBJ. That feels like there's already been a handful of three two counts or three ball counts for LeBaron. Really good plate discipline discipline early for this LSU offense. Here's Mac Bingham. Bingham takes a strike. Bingham after playing four years at University of Arizona including two with Jay Johnson as his head coach. Jay thought for sure this guy was going to be drafted last year and he was surprised to see him out there and available and here he is it's playing his final year of college baseball for his Arizona original coach that recruited him Jay Johnson. Fifth year player was all Pac-12 last year. Now in his first year in a Tigers uniform. LSU and Texas last played in the college classic two years ago here at Minute Maid Park. At the time Texas was ranked number one and LSU was ranked number five now the defending national champion Tigers at number three and Texas coming in at 15th in the nation. One and two the count for LBJ his pitch home swinging a foul. 
Baron Johnson Jr. did pitch in that college classic in 2022. He pitched against UCLA, came out of the bullpen, only faced three batters, gave up a hit and a walk in a third of an inning and a run scored against him. Well, there you go again, Blumber. Yeah. You said he's not afraid to work in. That's something that even at the major league level oh, you don't see a lot. No, I, I completely agree on that. I wish more guys would work inside, but again, it's a little bit more dangerous when you're facing some guys with some serious thumb because if you miss to the inside, you want to miss off the plate like you just saw LeBaron. But that's what it does. If you miss in, you can set up that outside corner, kind of stand that right-handed hitter up a little bit more straight, and then snap that slider off the outside corner for the swing and miss. All the outs coming via the strikeout for LeBaron Johnson early. Five strikeouts of the first eight batters as Bingham goes down swinging. Now Michael Braswell, the third, the shortstop, will be the hitter. And he dots up the inside edge. Even though it's scarier at some points, it, sometimes to pitch inside at the big league level, you don't have aluminum bats. <laughs> that's true. So you can get in that kitchen a little bit. Yeah, you know, you can snap some bats. But that's the problem right there. If you can't get to that inside corner, it leaks out of the plate. That could be the mistake that somebody jumps on. And you know there's a conversation going on in that LSU uh, Tiger dugout right now saying, okay, some of these fastballs are beating us in, boys. We might have to think about that and maybe eliminate the outside corner and clear out the kitchen. 0 oh, 2 to Braswell. Takes one down for a ball, one and two. The kitchen being the inside corner. Back door is the outside corner. Kind of surprised to see Milam still at first base, too. Yeah, Milam has three steals and three attempts this year, tied with Kling for the team lead coming in. Chopping foul. Stays one and two on Braswell, who started his collegiate career at South Carolina before transferring over to LSU. And again, LSU, even though they've only put a few runners on, they are really elevating the pitch count for LeBaron Johnson Jr., who's thrown 53 pitches in the second inning. Yeah, that walk around the back of the mound is a little more exaggerated already in the second inning for LBJ. Good block. Not far enough away from Milan to try to advance. And the count stays two and two on Braswell. This count moves to two and two, I should say. Hit sharply but foul in between Josh Jordan the third base coach in the bag stays two and two. Good job of getting the head out right there by Braswell that was again. LeBaron Johnson trying to get to that inside corner with two strikes. Every single LSU hitter has seemingly had a deep count the first time through the lineup. And this is another extended at bat as Braswell fouls off some two strike pitches here. Even though there are five strikeouts by Tiger hitters, they've been great at bats. They've seen plenty of pitches. Right now, 56 pitches in. That one's going to stay fair down the left field line and go all the way to the wall. Milam on the move to third. Porter Brown gets the ball back in quickly. Overshoots the cutoff man, but they had held the runner at that point. So no damage done, but a double by Braswell the third, putting runners on second and third with two outs. That is just an extremely good at bat by Braswell. He fought off that fastball in, earned himself an opportunity to get a hanging slider out over the plate. Did a good job of keeping the hands back and extending through this pitch, raking it into that left field corner. Pretty good job by the Longhorns getting that ball back in, too. Brown got that back in a hurry. David Pierce, who's the head coach, is also the pitching coach. So he makes visits whether he takes his pitcher out or just wants a word 
with his pitcher. There's obviously no possibility of taking him out here. There's nobody warming, but he has watched his starter, LBJ, who threw eight innings of shutout baseball's last start, only needed 100 pitches. Throw 57 pitches so far as we play here in the second. Yeah, the damage has been minimal because there still hasn't been a run put across against him, but at the same time, Coach Pierce is probably going out there just to give him a little bit of a breather, knowing that he's getting back to the top part of the lineup of the Tigers. So LeBaron Johnson Jr. will now face Paxton Kling, who reached on an infield, hit his first time up, hit one in the hole at short, and beat the throw from Jalen Flores. Fortunately for LeBaron, it's a comfortable night here at Minute Maid Park with a little bit of breeze, so you're really not getting as taxed as you would maybe in a little bit later in spring. LSU continues to take close pitches and work counts. Want to know? Jay Johnson loves the skills of this guy. Paxton Kling hits it sharply, but right at the shortstop, Flores and LeBaron Johnson Jr. gets out of damage with a ground out to end the inning. But another inning with a lot of pitches. We're still scoreless heading to the bottom of the second. Saturday schedule day two here at the Astros Foundation College Classic tomorrow we kick things off with Vanderbilt against Houston Vandy was a winner coming from behind against Louisiana today a 7 4 winner Louisiana rallied late and had to go ahead run at the plate when they made the final out in the ninth inning Texas State will take on this 15th ranked Texas Longhorn team in the middle game tomorrow and then we'll have Louisiana and LSU that'll be the battle of the state of Louisiana lot on the line there as the Raging Cajuns take on the Tigers to wrap up day two and believe it or not as good as the crowd is tonight they're expecting even more a bigger crowd tomorrow. I'm going to have to see that to believe it right because I'm impressed by what's happening right now in Minute Maid Park but if it's going to be better than this good for these players playing in front of those crowds I wonder how many of the uh, are there going to be Raging Cajuns that have like you know the purple underneath. <laughs> are they going to be switching shirts, you know, depending on who's at the plate or who takes the lead? Are we going to have some of those fair weather or is it just cut and dry? Cut and dry, man. <laughs> you don't mess. You're either Louisiana or you're LSU. There is no mixing and matching. <laughs> Tommy White makes this play in foul territory. Max Ballou, the DH, pops one up, and Luke Coleman has the first out of the second inning. What tailgating there is here at Minute Maid Park will be dominated, you would think, tomorrow by the Louisiana crowd. Yeah, I can attest to the fact that LSU gets the tailgating done. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. I mean, hours and hours before the, the first pitch. The dedication is remarkable, Todd. You have one of your girls at LSU, so you've been up there a few times in the last 12 months. Yeah, we've got the we've got uh, the SEC covered. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, the, my my LSU daughter said that I better be cheering heavily for the Tigers tonight. <laughs> I'm trying to play it straight up, and I'll do my best. But at the same time, I know that uh, Kayla will be rooting for the purple and gold. Here's Casey Borba. 
you got some connections to Texas too. It's it's amazing. Yeah, plenty of connections, and it's actually kind of crazy that I played little league baseball with Casey Borba's dad, Eric, who's a coach now at Orange Lutheran. He's coached with Team USA at some of the lower levels. I was able to catch up with his dad, Tom, and the family right before the games. So it's great to see them in town. It's also great to see a Borba playing for UT. Borba the DH. I said Baloo was the DH. Baloo's in right field. Borba flies out to right, and that's the second out of the inning. Well, the cool thing is these two teams should see each other a lot more, even if they're not in the same college classic, because they'll now be part of the SEC together. Yeah, I think that's pretty, that's pretty wild. And we know that the coaches have gotten their maybe their schedule for the Latin for the next decade, which is amazing to me. But the SEC, I think, is excited to add UT and Oklahoma. But I would imagine LSU in maybe missing out on playing Arkansas a couple of times a year will have to go through UT will have to go through Oklahoma. So this could develop into a pretty good rivalry and this might just be the beginning of it right here knowing that they're going to be common foes here for years to come. And Jay Johnson saying that next year they play in Austin. Also they play on the road against Oklahoma in their first seasons in the SEC and he sounded excited about it yeah. too. Yeah he's fired up. I mean you're going to lose some series There's 16 teams now and only 16. 10 series. Yeah that, that SEC conference is going to be crazy. It's going to be absolutely nuts. So they'll get a and M. LSU will get a and M in Mississippi State every year because those are their natural rivals. That's yep. what's been deemed as their natural rivals. But then next year they start out with the two new SEC teams on the road. I'm sure the USCU dish Falk field will be jammed up it in Austin <laughs> for those games. One one pitch is swung on Jack O'Dowd pops one foul. You mentioned knowing Casey Borba's father Jack O'Dowd's father everybody knows in the big major leagues former Rockies GM and current analyst on MLB Network. And Very O'Dowd cool. yeah. Casey. Started every game so far this year in his senior year with the Longhorns. Left hand hitting second baseman takes one down and in. It's two and two. It's three of 26 so far on the season. No doubt last year played in 63 games as a starter, 64 total, batted 284 with six home runs. And a swing and a miss. Holman with a very strong second inning gets through the six, seven, and eight hitters in order. We head to the third, still scoreless. LSU Texas big crowd 20,000 or more on hand at Minute Maid Park top half of the third inning the Tigers will have their two three and four hitters do up Tommy White Brady Neal Hayden Travinsky 
Bobby Dynamite's even Man. here. Orbit's even here. You know today's a big day of Bobby Dynamite and Orbit are showing up. Bobby Dynamite, Orbit, roof open, fireworks to follow. Yeah, you pointed that out. I didn't know we were doing fireworks. That's usually a, every Friday home game for the Astros is Friday night fireworks, but we're doing it for the College Classic. I like it. This is legit tonight. Yeah. This is this is a huge first of March college baseball game as Tommy White digs in. Tommy, who's from St. Pete Beach, Florida, went to IMG Academy, tore it up at NC State his freshman year, tore it up at LSU last year. And now leads the team and hits this season, but hasn't jumped out of the gates quite like he would hope for. He's, I mean, he's hitting 343 coming in. It's not like he's struggling, struggling, but Tommy's got pretty high standards. Well, I think. You know, he, he probably wants the power numbers to be, you know, two, three, four home runs, but he's only got one on the season so far. But at the same time, you know, he had some he had some help. He had more help last year he had, throughout that lineup. Now he's the established returning national champion and he's the heart of this order. So there's going to be a little bit more of a target when he comes up and a little more emphasis from these pitchers. And one pitch is down two and one. But I'm also curious to see how these Tiger hitters adjust to LeBaron Johnson after that first time through the order. They put great at bats against him. Yeah, so they saw a couple of these pitches too, so they should be more than ready for these second at bats. Tommy hits one to straightaway center field. Playable though, Will Gasparino is there and makes the play for the first out of the third. Tommy hit it on, on a line, but he hit it at the Longhorn center fielder. Well, that's the big part of this ballpark at Minute Maid Park is center field. A lot of deep fly balls go to die here at Minute Maid in center field. So what LeBaron Johnson Jr. would love is a pitch count somewhere between 10 and 15 this inning. Luke Coleman had a 14 pitch inning last inning. LBJ gets a swinging strike from Brady Neal 0 and 1. He'll struck out his first time up. Ooh. Pretty good fastball in the outside corner. Both these starting pitchers were two of the 55 preseason nominees for the Golden Spikes Award. So you're looking at two of the best pitchers in the nation. Tonight and LBJ, LeBaron Johnson Jr., and Luke Holman, the Alabama transfer pitching for LSU. Little cue shot towards third. Powell's going to charge, double clutches. His throw still on the money and in time to get Brady Neal by less than half a step. Second out of the inning. First of all, that's not an easy play for the third baseman with a left handed hitter up there. No, there's probably some pretty good English on that ball spinning towards Powell as he came charging in. It's probably why it rattled around in his glove and he had to do a double take to get it out of there. So now two outs, bases cleared, and Hayden Travinsky the batter. First pitch catches the top of the zone for a strike, 0 and 1. Tries to hold up on a close pitch and does. Doug Williams says no swing. It's one one. David Pierce coming out. A little bit of an issue with his catcher, I think. Galvan was grabbing that left wrist or that left hand. So the trainers out there with coach. I didn't see anything on that last play. Oh, it was a ground ball to third. But they are checking on Ryland Galvan right now and making sure he's okay. Something happened this inning. Galvan didn't bat last inning. He struck out his first time up. They're looking at his catching hand, his glove hand. 
right around the thumb I wonder, area. I wonder if he reached for that ball, that last pitch and jammed his thumb into the dirt. That is one part of the catcher. We probably don't talk about it enough at the big league level, but for a lot of these young catchers, that thumb can take a beating with as much action as these pitchers create. And then you add the velocity to it, too. You can see maybe trying to use a little bit of tape to stabilize it. Tom Mendez, the athletic trainer, out there taping that left thumb. So it looks like he's going to stay in the game, but a little bit of discomfort for a catcher when you have to have that thumb taped up and you have a hard throwing right hander on the back. say you got a guy throwing 95, 96 miles an hour, some two seam run, and you got to be able to stick the pitch, frame it up. But, but it also explains catchers, too. These guys are crazy. They are. Just, they love going back there. They know they're going to get punished on a daily basis, and they just play through it. See if they let LeBaron throw a warm-up pitch or two here and make sure Ryland's okay. Count is one and one on Hayden Travinsky. Bounces that test. one in there, so you got to test <laughs> That's a good the test right there. <laughs> Just go ahead and bury one. All right, looks like he's going to hang yeah, in he's there. He's going to stay. Well, if he can't go, there's about seven catchers on the LSU side that can come in. <laughs> Kimball Schuessler would be the guy on the Texas side that would take over, you would imagine. But for now, Galvan stays in there. The next pitch bounces up there. It's two and one. Two quick outs for LeBaron Johnson Jr. in this inning. 31 pitches in the first inning, 28 in the second. 11 so far in the third. As he gets a strike, it's two and two. He's still trying to get in there. Again, though, I like the miss on the inside, even though it's 3 2. He's not, he hasn't been afraid to go to that slider in this count. Travinsky down the line and left hooking, and it is foul. Home run distance, but foul. Trying to make a bid for those Crawford boxes and left. Tried to throw that off speed pitch, but Travinsky just got a hair out in front. Fortunately. Fortunately for Longhorn fans, that is. Sharply hit past the third baseman pal down the left field line. Travinsky heading to second. Aiden Travinsky, the DH, gets in there with a double. Start to cause a little bit of a stir with the Tiger fans here. But a good piece of hitting on a slider that stayed out over the plate. Just need a little bit of two out lightning to get that first run across. Josh Pearson battled in his first at bat, but was called out on strikes to end the first inning. First five outs for LBJ were strikeouts. The last three have been put outs in the field. This one fouled out of play. It's 0 1. Pearson. Played in the Cape Cod League this summer after being all tournament team last year in the Baton Rouge Regional. All 13 games he played in the NCAA tournament for the national champions last year. It's 0 2. At this point, with 77 pitches in the third, it's doubtful that LeBaron could go much more than five innings today. I'd actually be kind of surprised if he did make it that far. I'm not sure how far LeBaron wants to be stretched out. 
Got him. That's going to help. Swing and a miss and a pitch down and in. That is six strikeouts for LeBaron Johnson Jr. We remain scoreless heading to the bottom of the third. Single game tickets for 2024 season are on sale now. Make sure you get your tickets to see your Houston Astros on their relentless pursuit of baseball's biggest prize. Visit Astros.com slash tickets to get yours today. We are pleased to be joined by the head coach of the LSU Tigers, Jay Johnson, Jay Todd Callis, Jeff Blum from the broadcast booth. Great at bats against LeBaron so far. What have you seen down there? Yeah, we're competing. We're making him uh, get the ball in the zone, and he's tough. So the no runs on the board, but 78 pitches after three innings is a good start. It's a very good start. Great at bats like TK saying. What are the conversations like for your offense in that dugout talking about LeBaron? Yeah, he can really locate his fastball. He doesn't miss over the plate very much, and you have to get him up in the zone because it's slider and split uh, with that high release. Uh, you have no chance at the bottom. So we got to get keep getting him elevated, and hopefully we can get him out of the game this inning. Coach, you look around this stadium, and we think it's almost two thirds purple and gold. What I, we knew it was going to be a big LSU crowd, but are you even impressed with this turnout? Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, Houston, biggest uh, LSU alum base in the entire country, and then there's a lot of really good uh, young players in this area that we want to uh, consider LSU. So, uh, all good for the Tigers to be here. That being said, how important is it for LSU to be seen here in the Houston area as far as recruiting is concerned? Yeah, it's big time. It's it's really important. And you look around and see this environment really at either one of these two programs. Um, you, you don't get this in minor league baseball. So unless you're like a top 15 overall pick, uh, you should come to college, especially at one of these two programs. Will Gasparino strikes out. That's now five strikeouts for Luke Holman. Luke's the guy you got from Alabama, and he endeared himself to you right away. Got your 100th win at LSU. But uh, what a nice acquisition. What a nice pitcher to have in L at the LSU program for his first year. Yeah, he's a complete pitcher. You know, we struck gold, obviously, last year with Paul Skeens, and nobody will ever be Paul Skeens. But I thought Luke was the best pitcher in the portal this summer, and we made it a huge priority and very thankful that he chose to come to LSU. It's pretty impressive what he's doing. Is he actually a strikeout type pitcher? Yeah, he can do a lot. I mean, it's just uh, it's front to back. It's up and down. It's fastball location. Uh, he's hard to predict, so he can't really sit on one pitch. And so he's just, just he's just a complete pitcher. He's got great aptitude. Jared Thomas, the leadoff hitter, batting for Texas. Coach, you've almost called Houston your home for a while here. You guys had the game in Rice on Wednesday. You've been in town for close to a week. You've got a lot of good work done, I would think, this week. Yeah, it's been great. We've uh, started with eight games in 10 days, so it was good for our players to rest on Monday. We had a good workout at Rice on Tuesday, pretty much with another good day of rest. And then hold on here one second. Yeah, take your time. Braswell, the shortstop. I love that he called it off. And um, yeah, so it's it's been a great week. Uh, I like getting the team away from our home environment, even though it's the best home environment in all of college baseball. Get connected, get bonded, and we're obviously playing four really good programs while we're out here. I was going to say, you're stepping up the opponent here playing against 
UT Lafayette Louisiana tomorrow you know how important is it to play some of these bigger bigger universities before you head into SEC play well it's a big deal I mean these are all perennial NCAA tournament teams that we're playing and uh, our league's a beast obviously and so we need to be prepared for that come two weeks from now we're obviously soon in my opinion one of the best pitchers in the country tonight love playing against these guys they're well coached coach Pierce does a really good job uh, they play great defense they're fundamentally sound so this is, this is a good one for us tonight well you're going to see a lot more of this team as they head into the SEC coach there's going to be a lot of great battles between you and the Longhorns through the years I, I appreciate the time I know there's a lot going on down there and thank you so much for joining us tonight yeah great being with good you luck, guys. coach thank, thank you, you. Jay Johnson, the head coach of the LSU Tigers, as we have a 1 1 count here on Peyton Powell, takes a called strike. It's 1 and 2. The atmosphere is tremendous. Obviously, coach is biased, but he loves the kids that end up playing college baseball <laughs> yeah. for that extra year and not turning pro one year early. No, I, I really think it's an interesting conversation to be had, too. I don't know if we have enough time for it, but this will help if it gets down. Yeah. So a base hit for Powell going the other way. Peyton Powell, two for two second hit of the game for him you know he's right you know there might be a you know there might be if you're a young talented athlete who has a potential to be drafted or go to a major division one school if you're below a certain round if you've if you pegged I want to be th this round or above then you go if not you're going to a quality university where you're going to get the same technology you might get a little more attention the atmosphere is going to be a heck of a lot better than it's going to be in the New York Penn League and so why not make that decision to go to college and get the appropriate coaching and build your body, build your mind, and be a little bit more prepared to speed your way into. And I think if Major League Baseball plays it right, after condensing the minor league system, you can use some of these collegiate organizations to make sure you get pro-ready baseball players at 20, 21 years old. I mean, some of the facilities. Oh, man. A lot of major leaguers yes. work out at these schools during the offseason because the facilities are so good. You're 100% correct. And that's what I mean. You know, you could really develop. You could be one of those raw, talented guys, but all of a sudden you start to get the technology and coaching. You might just take that leap into the, you know, into a top five pick. Who knows? Peyton Powell's a good example of a guy who's kind of had to wait his turn to get playing time at University of Texas. Powell had a great season last year. Now one of the top hitters on this team in his redshirt senior year, but he was in 2023 had a 979 OPS, led the team in hitting at 339, all Big 12. But prior to that, he kind of had to wait his turn his first few years. Pitch home is a strike, and Luke Holman gets ahead one and two on Jalen Flores. Holman continues to work ahead of hitters. He has allowed three base runners so far, a couple of hits and a walk. Let's be honest, too, TK. Spend your offseason as a baseball player going to Texas football games or LSU football <laughs> games. That'd be all right. That one's down. And we mentioned the Longhorns home field of. UFCU dish fog field it's the crowds that show up at Alex Box Stadium out of control too in Baton Rouge. I mean <laughs> it is it is on every night there. You are a rock star. Flores struck out swinging his first time up. Two two pitches close. LSU fans as you can hear one of that call instead it's three and two it's understandable because Holman is all over the strike zone he is living on the edges again like coach Jay Johnson just said he's pretty unpredictable with what he's able to go out there and do but he's constantly forcing hitters to make swing decisions there's not a comfortable take there's been a couple of balls in the dirt where you see it out of the zone out of the hand but you've got to be ready to hit. Powell on first base off with a 3 2 pitch and a strikeout for Holman. Luke Holman gets his sixth strikeout of the game. One left on, still scoreless.
Top of the fourth inning, Astros Foundation College Classic finale of day one here at Minute Maid Park. Scoreless between LSU and Texas. LSU has put some pitches on LeBaron Johnson Jr. here. You heard the head coach, Jay Johnson, for LSU say hopefully we can get him out after this inning, and he has a new battery mate. Unfortunately, Rylan Galvan cannot go anymore. As we were looking at that thumb on his glove hand last inning, and Kimball Schusler takes over behind the plate. Yeah, hopefully nothing serious for Galvan, but we're going to have a chance to see the second catcher on this ball club for the Longhorns. There he is, Kimball Schusler. Up to a relatively decent start. No RBIs, but eight hits, hitting 500 this season. Schusler gets into the game, batting in that same spot in the. It's funny. Big hat. It's big funny. hat. There you go. There he is. <laughs> about all I can get away with TK I can't go much <laughs> further than that but if you know the joke you know it <laughs> Jared Jones leads off for LSU I mentioned the pitch count quite often tonight for LeBaron Johnson Jr. it's at 78 starting the fourth inning Jared Jones struck out on a full count his first time up close pitch doesn't get the call 2 and 0. Oh. Even though these teams are scoreless through three, it's advantage LSU because the Texas starter has 78 pitches thrown, while the LSU starters only needed 52 pitches through three. And now LeBaron with a 3 0 count. Never easy for a starter to switch catchers mid game. Yeah, especially after that first inning, it looked like LeBaron was kind of catching his rhythm with Galvan back there. Jones takes a strike, three and one. Jared Jones, sophomore out of Marietta, Georgia. Hits the ball hard and over the leaping head of Peyton Pound into the corner. Jones digging for second. Came in with a 767 slug percentage and doubles in his second at bat tonight. We'll see if that's what LSU needed. The Tigers have been putting together some great at bats against LeBaron Johnson, now starting to wear him down a little bit. Some of those pitches that have been on the edges previously starting to hang up out over the plate. That was a laser into that left field corner. Steven Milam, the switch hitting freshman, will try to think pull mode to get that runner to third with less than two outs. That'll be interesting to see if he does lay down a punt or or try and pull that baseball because he's well on top of the plate to be able to pull anything that LeBaron Johnson brings at him. That's Galvan right there, I believe. And yeah, checking on the starting catcher who had to leave the game. Longhorns have their bullpen going. Tanner Witt, hard throwing right hander from here at Houston, went to Episcopal. He's warming up. They grab some pitch com issues behind the plate with the new catcher, Schusler. Pitch com a little bit different here at the collegiate level in the big leagues. It's the catchers are inputting on a basically a keypad, telling the pitchers through voice or a speaker in their hat. Here at the collegiate level, it's a wristband. It actually has a screen on it, so you can read what the pitch is going to be. And you'll see them on players around the diamond, too. Everybody, I think, on the defensive side will have one. Steven Milam walked his first time up. Another pickoff attempt. This one. Also unsuccessful as Jones gets back to the bag. One thing I do love about college baseball in comparison to pro baseball is that they will try anything to get it out. You'll see pickoffs all over the place. You'll see trick plays. Yeah, there's everything's on the table. Jones isn't that far off. But they continue to try and pick him off second base. Yeah, the LSU. 
Tiger dugout's probably telling LeBaron Johnson he's going the wrong way. Also, it might be a little bit of stall to get the bullpen going, too. Round the bun, Milan takes a strike on one. To swing, didn't mean to. Fouls one away, and now Johnson try and go for the strikeout as he gets out of Milam 0 2. Definitely now you've got a battle if you're Milam. Start playing these powerhouse type teams, every run seems to count. Milam's got to try and move that runner over. Of pitches in four innings, 86 so far. Probably the last inning for LeBaron. Try to hook a foul or hook a ball to the right side. Instead, it's foul. It stays one and two. But I think that pitch count doesn't necessarily speak against what LeBaron Johnson's doing. I think he's pitching all right. He's doing a great job battling through a tough lineup, but it more explains the matchup. This is exactly what we expected. A lot of foul balls with two strikes, a lot of close takes. LSU has grinded out at bats tonight. Island the seven hitter, Matt Bingham on deck. Aaron so far has allowed. A hit in every inning. But he's been able to work around trouble with six strikeouts. He's also walked a couple in addition to the four hits allowed. Now 3 2 count after getting ahead 0 2. It's a good thing we're not playing a drinking game with you saying 3 2. <laughs> I know. It's been a lot of them. Seven full counts for LBJ tonight. Ground ball foul. And again, Milam using up extra pitches. 90 pitches, three innings, plus one batter into the game. I would imagine as a pitcher, it's got to be mentally exhausting when the opposing team just continues to foul off your two strike pitches. I think you've made a pitch out of the hand, ends up being a foul ball, and you got to regroup and do it again. Close, no call. That's ball four. As the third walk allowed by LeBaron Johnson Jr. LSU 16 batters into this game averaging almost six pitches per plate appearance. It's a little Astro esque working the starting pitcher. But how about going from 0 2 to a walk by Milam? And Mac Bingham coming in from University of Arizona now. Back with his coach Jay Johnson at LSU. Pitch gets by. Advancing to third, Jared Jones. Advancing to second, Stephen Milam. Runners on second and third with nobody out on the wild pitch. There's a lot going on right there. A lot of movement in the infield, but that pitch has just spiked as good as LeBaron Johnson's been all evening. Just over boogied on that one. And Bounced it to the backstop, and that might be it. Well, Barron had a little bit of a delay last inning when his catcher, Alan Galvan, was injured, and now this inning has not been quite as smooth, and they are going to go to the bullpen and go to Tanner Witt here. The call has been made. LeBaron Johnson Jr. still has not allowed a run, but he's going to have second and third and nobody out for his reliever Tanner Witt when he comes in.
Back here at Minute Maid Park for the Astros Foundation College Classic. Third game the se of the day featuring UT and LSU. On in relief is Tanner Witt. That name is familiar to a lot of people here in the Houston area. Went to Episcopal High School playing with some of the younger Cruz family. Also the son of Kevin Witt, former big leaguer. But this is a big right arm for the University of Texas. Did have Tommy John surgery working back from that injury. You can see only thrown in two innings this season, three walks, so it has to be in command of that fastball that can reach the upper 90s. Coach said last outing he looked extremely good, so that might be part of the comeback trail for Tanner Witt. Pitch against St. John. St. John's had a strikeout in that, but his first outing of the season against the University of San Diego did walk three and allowed an earned run. And still had a lot of hit on this season and trying to get around a second and third no out situation he inherits a one and no count as LeBaron Johnson Junior leaves the game after a wild pitch Mac Bingham was around the bunt but now he doesn't have to worry about the bunt with runners on second and third and nobody out infield back for the Longhorns so LeBaron leaves after three innings plus two batters so far no runs of score but he's responsible for the two on. Bingham takes a fastball up 92 mile an hour fastball it's 2 and 0. Oh. Fastball curveball change up for Tanner Witt. No one's off the plate as well. Witt has walked three this year in his two innings of work as Blummer mentioned. All the walks came against San Diego in that initial outing of the year. 3 0 the count. Base open, and that'll be a walk, a four pitch walk. One of the pitches thrown by LeBaron Johnson Jr., the next three by Tanner Witt to load him up. Base is loaded, nobody out for the nine hitter, Michael Braswell, the third, who doubled his first time up. Base is juice, nobody out. Big moment for Braswell, who ripped one into that left field corner for a double off LeBaron Johnson. Braswell the third coming over first year at LSU it's been a couple of years at South Carolina last year hit 255 with a 372 on base percentage one home run 23 runs batted in Son of Mableton Georgia he's got junior status first year with the Tigers an 0 one count a big spot for him swinging a foul and with ahead 0 and 2 Braswell might want that one back took a big swing at that breaking ball. Got eight stakes on the season. A lot of stakes down at the bottom of the order. Tanner Witt, a fourth generation Longhorn. Mentioned his dad Kevin played with the Blue Jays, Padres, Tigers, and Rays after being a first round pick in the 94 draft. Ground ball towards third. Into left field, base hit, one run scores. Here comes Milam. The throw home by Brown is not in time. 2 0 LSU. Big swing here with the bases loaded. Nobody out. Braswell feeling it. Has been seeing the ball great today. Second hit. Drives in two to get the Tigers on the board and start the scoring in this game. Here's Paxton Kling, the leadoff hitter. Tough spot to be in right here. Still nobody out in this inning, and you've got the top of the lineup coming up for the Tigers. Kling with already one hit in this game.
Both runs charged. LeBaron Johnson Jr. goes three innings. Plus two batters, four hits, two runs. A lot of deep counts. LSU putting great at bats together tonight. And now a 2 nothing lead. Still nobody out here in the fourth. Witt not only pitched at Episcopal for head coach Matt Fox, he played shortstop, second, and third base, as well as the outfield. Patrick might have taken that one out of the zone for Tanner. Fact, he was ranked the number one shortstop in Texas in high school. Missing wide, two and one. Did get 13 at bats his freshman year, did Tanner Witt, but he's been primarily focused on pitching his last two seasons. In the air, center field, playable. Tagging at second is Bingham. The catch is made by Gasparino. The throw will not be in time. Bingham moves over to third on the fly out by Paxton Kling for the first out of the fourth. And runners on the corners for the NCAA RBI leader from a year ago. Good job of tagging up and getting into third base. Now you've got your. RBI guy at the play with a runner at third base less than two outs. The only interesting thing is that Tommy White's had issues hitting into double plays. That runner still at first base. White hooks one foul 0 and 1. Tommy is struck out and lined out to center tonight. Swing from Tommy White. He is not happy. Oh. He wants that one back. Yeah, he wanted to test the integrity of that Crawford box out there with that swing. So now Witt gets ahead 0 and 2. He got ahead 0 and 2 on Braswell before Braswell singled. And he checks Michael over at first. Braswell's been. The hitting star for LSU so far tonight a double and a two RBI single two for two in that nine spot in the order. Fouls off that 0 2 pitch. We tried to come back last year after Tommy John surgery towards the end of 2023. Not quite go the well the way he had hoped, and now we're working back into full health in 2024. Tonight working out of the bullpen. One, two pitch misses one and two. You mentioned the double play ground ball. It's been. Five of the nine LSU double plays have been hit into by Tommy White this year. He's also driven in 10 runs in the first nine games of the season. First and third, one out for Tommy Tanks. Staying alive. Yeah, feast or famine, but he's definitely the guy you want at the plate right now. It's just a matter of time before that RBI swing comes into play. Even with 10, probably has had more opportunities to drive in more. Bingham on third, Braswell on first, one out. In the air, looks like it's going to be in play. The second baseman, O'Dowd, the first baseman, Thomas, nobody can catch it. 
That ball was up a long time in the air, but nobody could get to it for the Longhorns, and it's uh, out you really want on a pop-up off that guy's bat. Yeah, you feel like the second baseman was probably playing. Odell was probably playing a little bit to pull on Tommy White. So a long run for him to get over there, so it kind of left it up to Thomas to try and chase that and catch it over his shoulder. You can have all the experience you want in the outfield playing center field like Thomas has, but once you start going towards the stand, you feel the netting, you feel the stands coming at you. Just uncomfortable. Never like to give this guy to play it a second chance. And they haven't had a chance to take batting practice in here. I know they had a workout yesterday, but still the unfamiliarity with some of the surroundings can play a little bit of an issue on some of those pop fouls. Everybody worked out here yesterday. The roof was closed for the workout. Everybody had an hour on the field. This one's popped into shallow right. This won't score the run. O'Dowd out below in. And it'll be below who makes the play and nobody able to advance. So Tommy White flies out to shallow right for out number two. That's a nice job by Tanner Witt. Well, you're not out of the woods, but that is huge. Good job of Ballou calling that fly ball. He's obviously got his momentum going towards home plate. A little bit of a head fake by Bingham. It'd be huge if Tanner White could keep this game right where it's at, two to nothing, not allow any more runs to score. A little meeting at the mound as Kimball Schuessler goes out to talk with Tanner Witt. Tanner came on to face Mac Bingham, inherited a 1 0 count, walked him. Walk will be charged with Tanner. Then the base is loaded single by Braswell. But since then, a fly out to Paxton Kling and a pop up to shallow right by Tommy White couldn't score the run. Brady Neal, he was one of the heroes, if not the biggest hitting star of the night. In the LSU win at Rice on Wednesday, bats here with first and third and two outs. This is a guy who took advantage of that jet stream and that hurricane force winds that were blown out to right at Reckling Park. A couple of bombs. Yeah, I think they would have been out anyhow, but oh, that yeah. just added to the distance. Just added a little more layer of majesticness. They were huge shots to right center. Takes one in. One and oh. Struck out his first time up, ground to the third, his second time up. Pretty good pitch there on the outside edge, one on one. And on Tuesday, or excuse me, on Wednesday, went two for four with those two bombs and five runs batted in, scored three runs. Runner on the go, Brady fouls it back, it's one and two. As well, stolen a base earlier for LSU. Last year, South Carolina, Michael Braswell just stole one bag in two attempts. So, Witt trying to get through this fourth inning, one two pitch. And it's a called third strike, dotted him up on the outside edge. Nice job by Tanner Witt pitching around further trouble. But LSU scores two, and the Tigers lead 2 nothing.
Bottom half of the fourth inning, LSU with a 2 0 lead. We are joined by the Texas Longhorn head coach, David Pierce, down in the dugout. Coach, thanks for joining us. Todd Callis and Jeff Blum. Uh, nice job by Tanner to get through any further damage. You have to be fairly pleased with the way he was able to work around some trouble. Okay, David apparently not hearing us. Do you hear us now, Coach? No. Nope, right. He gone. All right. All right. We tried. Porter Brown will lead things off for the Texas Longhorns here in the fourth inning. He walked his first time up and takes a pitch down and in for a ball. One and oh. A little technical issue with Coach Pierce, but he had to be pleased with the way Tanner Witt was able to work through that fourth inning after a couple of runs scored. As Porter Brown swings and misses, it's one and one. Brown walked his first time up. The Longhorns trying to solve. Luke Holman, who so far through three innings has allowed two hits and a walk. Very similar to his numbers last year at Alabama. Not a lot of base runners. This ball hits sharply, but at the second baseman, Milam Steven makes the play on one hop, and that's a one away in the fourth inning. Brown hit the ball hard, just off to a tough start this season. Milam at the right place at the right time. Now Kimball Schusler will get his first at bat. Schusler redshirt junior who started his collegiate career at Texas A&M in 2021 before heading to Texas. So Atlanta Texas first pitch to him is a foul tip for strike one. Schusler off to a nice start this year, eight for 16. This is his seventh game played. He made four starts. Down in the count here, 0 and 2. Both catchers coming into the game for the Longhorns had a 500 batting average. Game away from Austin in the 2024 season for this Texas team. Schusler stays alive with a foul ball. Luke Coleman's done a nice job for LSU. He's done made three starts for them. And still carries that perfect ERA. One two pitch swing and a miss Holman picking up a strikeout Schusler goes down that's seven for Holman and two outs in the fourth. That was good late dive on that slider. From Holman. He's doing a great job of moving pitches all over the strikes on that fastball he's able to pinpoint anywhere he wants. Then he has curveball slider. He is now 16 innings into his collegiate season. Just seven hits, two walks, and not a run allowed. Here's Max Ballou. You talk about tunneling in the big leagues. It looks like he is very consistent with that release point, that arm angle, so it's tough for these hitters to pick it up out of the hand, especially when you see the action on those last two sliders. Then you just race a fastball up, so he's fallen into a groove, and his pitch count is actually in pretty good shape after that first inning. 24 first inning pitches, 14 the next two. And he's at 10 pitches this inning with two strikes and two outs as he misses up one and two. Holman was drafted out of high school in the 20th round. Luke went to a high school in Pennsylvania. He's out of Sinking Springs, PA. His dad actually was a minor leaguer for the Phillies for a number of years. His dad, Craig, a pitcher as well. But Toronto drafted him later in that draft, the 20th round, knowing that he was unlikely to sign because he was committed to Alabama. But they just took a shot thinking if for some reason one of our early round picks doesn't sign and we have some extra money around, maybe we can steal a talent like Holman late. But it didn't work out. He went on to pitch a couple of seasons for Alabama. Now his first year at LSU, and he has been brilliant. And two pitch down, two and two. Uh, 
Luke's quite a story. He dealt with childhood cancer as an eight year old, had large cell lymphoma. Took chemo for a year. It was really tough on the whole family, but got through that. Everything's okay. And now a star athlete at the collegiate level. 2 2 pitch called third strike. Luke Holman, four shutout innings, set eight strikeouts. Gets Palou looking, and the LSU righty stays in control with a 2 0 lead. Opening day 2024 right here at Minute Maid Park March 28th against the New York Yankees will be on on Space City Home Network Todd Callis Jeff Blum Julia Morales two o'clock central for our special one hour pregame show Blummer 27 days from now the season will begin. First of all it's a great number. Second of all <laughs> I'm, I'm excited I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We had a chance to call a couple games games down there in spring and we're going to have plenty more on Space City Home Network. But yeah season is upon us and why not start it off with the Vaunted New York Yankees. Astros play 20 of their first 21 days on the schedule, and it's not easy. The Braves are in the mix, Yankees are in the mix, Rangers in the mix a couple of times. They come out of the gates with some tough opponents, so a lot been, of games early on too, without many days off. Just that one day off in the first 21 days. So game on, right out of the gates. Here's Hayden Travinsky. 27 a good number because it's Altuve's number. Yes. Oh. that's exactly why and there's oh. 27 outs in a ball game. There it's you just go. A, it's a pure number. It really is a baseball <laughs> number right. 2 0 pitch is slowly hit towards the right side fielded there by Jack O'Dowd who makes the play. Travinsky retired for the first time. There's one away. You were 27 most of your career. Yes. That was because of my favorite baseball player ever. Vlad Guerrero. Yeah. Oh man. As soon as I got away from Montreal and I found the opportunity to get another number other than 11, I wore 11 in college and I wore it in Montreal. Montreal. But when I got over here to Houston, obviously Brad Osmus wore sticks most of the time when I was here. And I think <laughs> the guy I got traded for, Chris Truby, I originally wore number six in spring training with the Astros when I first got traded. But I think CJ Nikowski. If I remember correctly had number 27 and I think at the end of camp they let him go and I was like hey I get a chance to be Vlad Guerrero and I took number 27 the rest is history. I love it. Yeah. That's how it works. Who did you go to to tell him you wanted 27. Dennis Laborio. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's crazy. Who's got a tie with the UT head coach. Unfortunately we didn't have a chance to talk to David Pierce but Pierce while he was coaching high school here in Houston he was a local guy he went to. High school here went to UH here. Uh, he was throwing BP for the Astros and he went to Dennis Laborio before the Astros moved to what was then Enron Field, now Minute Maid Park, and said, Hey, I want to pitch BP in the new stadium. So let me go one more year because he was so crazy with his coaching. Yeah, I can only imagine. Coaching, teaching, doing his whole thing before he got into the college ranks at the high school level. He wanted, he wanted one more year as the Astros, as the Astros uh, batting practice pitcher and 
He was a lefty. Yep. He actually traveled a little bit before they said no just we'll use you for the home game so you can still do your work at home. But yeah he's got Dennis Laborio ties. It's amazing the baseball ties to this city of Houston. But yeah that was a great story that was a lot of fun to listen to. And then he went on after high school to be a pitching coach at Rice for a number of years. Yeah, the late Dennis Laborio he was great. He was, he was uh, from uh, Boston and he was every bit of it <laughs> as an equipment manager. <laughs> He was highly entertaining. Tanner Wick got a couple of quick outs here, getting Hayden Travinsky and Josh Pearson to ground out to second, but now he's got a 3 0 count on Jared Jones. Wick out of the bullpen behind LeBaron Johnson Jr., who went three innings plus two batters. Gave up a couple of runs. The two runs charged to the te Texas starter, and now a four pitch walk. Jones, who doubled his last time up, draws a two out walk. More bullpen action going for the Longhorns. We mentioned Tanner's not really fully stretched out yet, so they'll watch him closely as they have double barrel action going in the Longhorn pen. Yeah, listening to Coach Pierce's Zoom interview, it really seemed like he had, you know, similar to the Astros, kind of three guys at the back end of games that he wants to get to, but there's going to be a couple of guys in between. But he's got Tanner Witt who he's trying to get through two innings but he's got a couple of other guys in Harrison and Scrubs that can give you three to nine outs out of that bullpen to try and set up the big three at the back end of his bullpen. But a little bit of an offensive meeting this is a little bit different here at the collegiate level you actually can call that timeout and have that offensive meeting. Milam is the hitter at the plate. Jones will be that runner at first base kind of talking through a little bit of the at bat here with two outs. Texas did have double barrel action going but now the lefty is sat down It's just the right hander Easton to miss who is warming up. LSU does not have another left handed stick until Brady Neal five hitters away after the switch hitter Stephen Milam. So Milam bats with two outs and a runner on and swings and pops one up could be playable shortstop Flores with a long run so does a third baseman and Powell stays with it to make the catch for the final out. Tanner Witt allows a two out walk but works a shutout fifth. We're halfway home with LSU leading Texas two to nothing. Bottom half of the fifth inning LSU with that two nothing lead both runs coming in on a bases loaded single by Michael Braswell the third and the Texas Longhorns trying to solve Luke Holman who threw four innings has limited them to two hits one walk and only one runner has reached second base that was Peyton Powell with a double back in the first inning seven eight nine hitters do up Casey Borba Jack O'Dowd and Will Gasparino. Orba, the DH flied out to right field his first time up. Oh. 
Orba earned his way into the starting lineup with a good weekend against Cal Poly last weekend. Texas had a game Tuesday. They played at home against St. John's, won that game 15 to 4. Holman continues to work ahead. Just two walks this season, including one tonight. He's 0 and 2 on Borba. Swing and a miss. Luke Holman, highly impressive. Nine strikeouts. He has retired five in a row, the last three on strikeouts. Now yeah, Luke Holman is very good. We have seen three of his pitches work extremely well. Two couple of sliders to set up Casey for this fastball up, and he's unable to catch up to it. Not exactly lighting up the radar gun. He's been in the low to mid 90s with that fastball, but again, it's all about location and sequencing for him, and he's done a very good job at it. He's found himself a nice rhythm. Looks like he's got great poise on the mound too because that first inning I think all of our heart rates were you know elevated a little bit but he has settled down nicely. After 24 pitches that first inning 14 each the next three. And he's got a 1 1 count on O'Dowd. Jack O'Dowd struck out his first time up. Puts the ball in play into shallow right center field converging Pearson and Kling It's the right fielder Pearson who makes the play. That's now out number two. That is 12 out of 13 sent down by Holman since a walk to Porter Brown in the first inning. As a hitter, you'd like to try and find a way to get Holman out of his rhythm because you can see he's just looking down at Pitchcom waiting for that announcement to come in on what pitch he's going to bring, and then he just goes with it. But as a hitter, you got to step out, tie your shoe, fake something in your eye. Stretch something or bunt or bunt, but you'd like to be able to put it in play. Catcher Neal thinks he was out of the box, and here comes Jay Johnson or not. Started out, but yeah, you just try and disrupt the rhythm of Holman. He was in the box the whole time. Will Gasparino, the true freshman out of L.A., went to Harvard Westlake. 6'6", 210 pound freshman. We mentioned Dan O'Dowd, father of Jack O'Dowd, who just flied out to right. Will's dad, Billy, not only played at Oklahoma State, but he is the VP of baseball operations for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's VP of scouting for the Dodgers for the last five years and moved up to director of baseball ops VP so a lot of baseball ties in this Texas Longhorn lineup strong baseball ties strong, yeah yeah but Billy goes excuse me will goes down on strikes the son of Billy for the final out and Luke Holman looks great 10 strikeouts five shutout innings LSU leads to nothing.
Back here at Minute Maid Park, it is all LSU, two to nothing over the Texas Longhorns. They are enjoying themselves some. Garth Brooks. Pretty strong contingent here from LSU, singing along with Garth. Pardon me as I embrace it. <laughs> the Longhorns are going to be heading back into their bullpen. Tanner Witt gave the gave the Longhorns a couple of innings. You're going to see a local right-hander. This is Easton Tumas out of Friendswood. Went to Friendswood High School. He's had the opportunity to get into a couple of games. He's allowed an earned run this season in five and two-thirds. Seven strikeouts to three walks. Makes that ERA 1.59. I'm sure he's pretty excited to be pitching here in front of family and friends. Six foot four, listed as 155 pounds. Got to get on that spread. <laughs> yeah, freshman. Got to be a little extra special for him to be pitching here at Minute Maid Park. He'll get the eight, nine, and one hitters for LSU. Mac Bigham, Michael Braswell, the third, and Paxton Kling. First pitch swinging is Bingham pops one up on the infield. The first baseman Jared Thomas takes charge, puts it away. One pitch and one out for Tumas here in the sixth inning. Well, you can see that live arm from Tumas. And one pitch through 93 miles an hour is a true freshman. Michael Braswell the third will bat he's been the hitting star for LSU at the bottom of that lineup nine hitter with a double that almost scored a run they had to hold up Milam at third base and then a single that scored two the only two runs of the game Braswell came in hitting 261 but he's now two for two tonight pushing that average up to 320 takes one off the plate it's one of one. Tumas was a all district player at Friendswood for the head coach Corey Benavides. Part of the 5A state runner up team a couple of years ago. This one grounded foul. It's one to two. You would imagine parents, siblings, all in attendance, probably some friends from Friendswood. Plate two and two. Hit hard. Caught by the third baseman, pal. Great at bats all night long for Michael Braswell, but he's retired for the second out. Yeah, he's uh, seeing the ball well, isn't he? Been hitting lasers to the left side. Doing a good job staying back on some off speed pitches, too. They call it the hot corner for a reason. Then you add the aluminum to it, and it gets to you a little bit quicker. Let's play by Powell. Here's Paxton Kling, top of the order, one for three tonight. Kling bats with two outs and nobody on. Friendswood, which is Southeast of Houston has had one major leaguer. That was Scott Williamson, who pitched in the big leagues from '99 to 2007. Oh, if you get a chance, ask Jeff Bagwell about that guy. <laughs> okay. Oh man. There's a strike. Is one of one. If I remember correctly, that should be a good conversation for you. I don't think he did too well. No. One, I think it was a one guy in all of the major leagues that the Hall of Famer just couldn't square up. Is that up. right? Yeah, it was amazing. I, if I'm remembering correctly, because I think he he would get after Danny Graves in the back end of that bullpen for the Cincinnati Reds, but I think Williamson, for whatever reason, hit the ball pretty well and got to him. Not many did. No, not at all. Especially in Cincinnati, too. Man, that was a place he raked. Yeah, he and Lance Berkman in Cincinnati, forget about it. That was a two-man wrecking crew. Clang swings through that pitch. It's two and two. There's a wrinkle. From Tumas, good slider, kind of a sweeper. 
That modern day slider is now that sweeper. There's going to be a little bit of tilt and movement moving across away from right handed hitters. Found out of play. You're right though, he's got a good live arm. And it's only going to get stronger the more that he is at this collegiate level working with everybody that UT has. This is just raw talent right here. And it looks like he's around the zone too, which is also promising. He's got the frame for it, the leverage, six foot six. You start to create that plane with that high release point. This ball hit pretty well towards the Crawford boxes. Porter Brown near the wall, and he makes the play right in front of the scoreboard and left. Paxton Kling gave it a ride to deep left, but played there for the final out. One, two, three inning for Easton to miss out of the Texas bullpen. Back here at Minute Maid Park, it has been the Luke Holman Show for the LSU Tigers. Transfer coming over from Alabama, becoming the number one for the LSU Tigers has really dominated this Texas Longhorn lineup. He has 10 strikeouts in the game, four via the fastball, four via the slider, and two via the curveball. He has shown great command of all three pitches tonight, doing a great job of keeping these Longhorns off balance. And there you see the numbers. He has been efficient through five with 76 pitches. Well, he's got the top of the order a third time through. He's coming off his most efficient inning, just needed 10 pitches to get through the fifth. Holman sends a two out walk to Porter Brown. Has retired 13 of the last 14 Longhorns. The only runner in that stretch, a single by Peyton Powell, who's due up second in this inning. Powell has the only two hits of the night allowed by Luke Holman. Jared Thomas has struck out and popped up hits this ball on the ground sharply but foul it's one and two to the leadoff hitter Thomas. Holman has been getting ahead of hitters. Mixing his pitches throwing everything for strikes he has been highly impressive he's now in his third start with the LSU Tigers. After transferring from Alabama still has not allowed a run. This is up two and two. Thomas came in batting 581. Jared had a 658 on base percentage his first eight games. And Holman picks up his 11th strikeout of the night. Luke Holman dominating this Longhorn lineup first out of the sixth inning. That'll be the fifth strikeout now with that slider. Good depth on that pitch, dropping it down below the swing of Powell. He is frustrating these Longhorn hitters. It's one thing to go out there and kind of mix it up a little bit, but he is doing a phenomenal job his third time through the order, really mixing pitches and keeping the hitters from knowing what's coming. 
Tolman. Soft pal with a strike 0 and 1. Here's the only guy who has solved Tolman tonight. He has both of the hits tonight. A double in the left center field and a single in the left field going the other way both times. Coach Jay Johnson for the LSU Tigers likes to use some alumni as examples on who he can compare some of his current players to. Which is a myriad of alumni who have pitched in the big leagues but Aaron Nola. Is a guy for the Philadelphia Phillies who he compared Luke Holman to being able to control that fastball and that sinker around the plate. Have the off speed but to be able to command three pitches at this level obviously benefits him greatly. Holman struck out 10 in his debut for LSU on February 17th in a win over Central Arkansas. That was five and a third shutout innings. Then in seven shutout innings, he struck out eight against Northern Illinois in his last outing. Tonight, he is up to 11 strikeouts and 85 pitches as he play here in the sixth. Little looper bidding for a three for three night. Peyton Powell has all three of the Longhorn hits. He's heading to second and he slides in with a double. Powell has gone opposite field successfully three times tonight. He's hit the ball hard a couple of times. This one a little bit softer variety, but still just as effective. It'll help the slug numbers. But you can see he does a good job without that stride just kind of relying on the hands to be able to put that ball in play and fight off that pitch. It wasn't a terrible pitch from Luke Holman but Powell has definitely got the number of Luke Holman and there's probably a lot of Longhorns trying to figure out what Powell knows. And Yeski, the pitching coach for LSU third different pitching coach the Tigers have had in the three years Jay Johnson has been there. All these guys keep getting great offers from other schools. Jason Kelly was there two years ago. Wes Johnson came from the Twins and was there. Yeah, that was a big move at the time. Wes now the head coach of Georgia. And now Nate Yeski, who worked with Jay in Alabama before going to Texas A&M the last two years, is back reunited with Jay Johnson here at LSU. I, excuse me. He was at Arizona. I was said Alabama because Holman's on the mound. He was at Arizona with Jay Johnson at Arizona. Yeah, you could have just said U of A. U of A. <laughs> <laughs> but Nate is the only active assistant coach who has had three different schools go to a College World Series. He was with Oregon State 11 years. He was with them when they went to the CWS, and then with Arizona the two years, and then Texas A&M two years. So he can add to that in his first year with LSU. Already the only one who's been with three different schools. Here's Jalen Flores. Another scoring opportunity for Texas. They haven't had many. They had a runner on second base and one out in the first when Flores struck out against Holman. Holman's career high in strikeouts in his collegiate career is 12. That came on March 7th of last year for the Crimson Tide at Sanford. Struck out 12 in five innings in that start. This ball down the right field line, just foul. That would have been the first run for the Longhorns, but it was foul by a matter of a foot or so. Jalen Flores tried to squeak that inside the right field line. Be a good shot at it right here. That ball, that fastball got deep, but just slicing into foul territory. Now Jalen down in the count 0 and 2. Flores has struck out twice. I know when we do Astros games, you keep the pitches the guy struck out on. Do you have that for Flores tonight? Yeah. You're the best. What do you of have? Of course I do. What are the two? Uh, the first at bat was a slider, last at bat was a fastball. Remember that second time through the order, he's kind of used that elevated fastball to get these guys, but he used two fastballs to get ahead on Flores. Staying, staying alive. With staying with the fastball, Flores staying alive, trying to change eye levels. Holman's at 90 pitches. LSU does have their bullpen going. 
as the lefty warming up for LSU. Paul Ossenmacher. <laughs> it looks like it. I'm kidding. It looks like a, we were playing in the 80s, maybe. Swing and a miss. Dropped a slider on the outside edge and broke it off the edge. And that is strikeout number 12, matching his career high. The sequencing has been great for Holman in two strikes, just because the fastball has been so effective and around the zone. So you're going to get some late swings, but he starts the previous pitch with a fastball away and gets Flores to kind of fight it off. And then he starts the slider on the same part of the plate and then breaks it off the plate, and Flores can't hold up. The lefty warming up was Nate. Ackenhausen and now Jay Johnson goes out to the mound. This is going to be it. And Luke Holman is going to get an incredible ovation from his teammates and this great crowd that has showed up wearing the purple and gold. Holman matches a career high with a dozen strikeouts. He goes five and two thirds innings, allows three hits, all to the same hitter, Peyton Powell. He walked one in the first inning and then was in control the rest of the way. Holman will leave. We'll have a new pitcher when we come back. Back here at Minute Maid Park, LSU and Texas going at it. And LSU has finally gone to the bullpen. Blue Coleman pitching a brilliant game with 11 strikeouts. But you're going to see left-hander Nate Ackenhausen coming into this game. 2-0 this season with a 4.05 ERA. Left-hander with a fastball slider mix. Came over from Eastern Oklahoma State College. Pitched last year with LSU. Appeared in 17 games, threw in 30 and two thirds innings, gave up 25 hits, about 14 walks in that span while having 36 strikeouts. So this will be his third appearance of the season. And Coleman, as you can imagine, got an incredible ovation from this crowd walking off five and two thirds innings so far of shutout baseball. He is responsible for Peyton Powell on second base with two outs as the lefty Porter Brown will face the lefty. Nate Ackenhausen. No pressure like coming into a game for a guy who hasn't given up a run all year with an inherited run. <laughs> Runner, sorry. 18 innings so far for Holman and still that zero ERA in the balance. Porter Brown has walked and grounded out to second. This one popped up, could be playable. Third baseman Tommy White, catcher Brady Neal. They just ran out of room. It goes into the LSU dugout. It's 0 2. I apologize. That was Luke Holman's 12th strikeout. That's his career high. Did it with Alabama last year on the 7th of March and does it on. The first of March in his third start with LSU. 0 2 pitch bounces in there. It actually hit the umpire, I believe, as it stayed in play. It may have gotten by Neal, but it didn't go to the backstop because it glanced off Seth Buckminster. 1 and 2 the count.
Got him. Ackenhausen comes in out of the bullpen to strike out Porter Brown to end the sixth inning. Quite an outing by Luke Coleman and LSU keeps their lead two to nothing. LSU and Texas big crowd on a Friday night fireworks to follow here at Minute Maid Park roof has been open all day long. This is game three of nine over the weekend LSU and Texas number three ranked Tigers and number 15th ranked Longhorns an incredible outing by the starter for LSU Luke Holman as we head into the seventh inning LSU leads two nothing on the bases loaded single by Michael Braswell in the fourth inning LSU plays the last game tomorrow night against Louisiana the battle of the Cajun State and Texas will play the middle game against Texas State the Lone Star battle scheduled for 305 Central last game scheduled for 705 Central today those games were pushed back a half hour and an hour each due to the length of the previous game Sunday it'll be Texas and Vanderbilt to start things off and LSU will play Texas State in the middle game with Houston the Cougs and Louisiana wrapping up 2024 Astros Foundation College Classic. Back for a second inning of work, Easton Tumis. He is an impressive looking freshman, a whippy arm who throws in the low 90s and delivers an off speed strike to Tommy White, 0 1. Texas starts the inning with bullpen action going. Tumis pitched the first 1 2 3 inning of the night for the Longhorns in the sixth inning. Misses off the plate to White, one and one. Tries to shoot the outside corner and misses. It's two and one. Between innings, I was checking out some video of him at Friendswood. He was, if possible, even thinner. No kid. In his senior year of high school, you said you mentioned 6'4", 155. He has always been real thin. Two-one pitch, hit high, hit deep, hit a ton to left center, all the way back at the wall, up by the home run pump. Tommy Tanks hits one by the home run pump at Minute Maid Park, and LSU leads three nothing. That was crushed. That ball was elevated and up in the air a while, and Tommy Tanks is pumped. These LSU fans are on their feet. He's got to make his way through the mosh pit of teammates as he gets a hanging slider and absolutely unloads. Tommy White. Who earlier tonight had a runner on third and less than two and couldn't get the run home. Hits a solo shot here to give LSU a 3 nothing lead. 
Now Brady Neal with a swinging strike 0 and 1. That is an impressive shot well over 400 feet beyond the left center field wall. Tommy White last year. 24 home runs 24 doubles. Set the freshman record for home runs when he won ACC freshman of the year at NC State the year before. And hits his second of the season in his junior year here tonight. Here's Brady Neal with a 1 1 count. That one's popped out of play. 1 and 2. We mentioned more LSU fans than Texas fans tonight, and they are enjoying a 3 0 lead here in the seventh. And watch one of the best hitters in the nation hit one out to deep left center. Pitch misses up two and two. Oh, impressive comeback for two miss getting the number three hitter Brady Neal on strikes. First strikeout for Easton two miss one away in the seventh. Yeah, that's something you're looking at if you're a coach for the Texas Longhorns is how does Tumas bounce back and he does with a high fastball right there to get the swing and miss on Brady Neal. Got him to expand. Now Hayden Trevinsky. Tommy White hit 27 home runs in his freshman year with NC State. That had snapped a freshman record, which stood for 32 years and 24 more last year in his first year with LSU. And now he hits his second of the season. So he's up to 53 collegiate home runs now. One on one, the count to Travinsky. Two miss misses up and in, two and one. Todd Green had the mark for 32 years, the former big league catcher. How about that? Green, he had 26 home runs as a freshman at Georgia Southern back in 1990. And then White. Got him by one in his first year at NC State. Three one count to Dravinsky. Longhorns have their bullpen going as this is the sixth batter that Easton Tumas is face and he allows a walk here with one out. Right side of your screen. Grant Fontano warming up for the egg for the Longhorns. Josh Pearson, the batter, runner on first base and one out. Tumas has thrown 26 pitches so far facing those six batters. It's now five out of six off the plate for Tumas. And it's 1 0 to Pearson. There's a strike. Good location on that, too. Tumas has faced. 10 batters before in an outing earlier this season against Houston Christian went two and a third in that outing. Through 39 pitches in that outing too. That one's down two and one. Two is the third pitcher of the night LeBaron Johnson Jr. three innings. Charged with a couple of runs Tanner Witt two innings did not allow a run. 
did have a couple of inherited runners score but two innings one hit no runs on the ledger for wit. That one gets by Schusler. Didn't look like it was a bad pitch just looked like he may have been crossed up as that pitch got away. That'll be a pass ball more than likely. Advancing Travinsky to second base. Yeah, I agree. That was kind of odd. I don't know if it tipped off the top of the glove or went through the glove. Just kind of reached out there a little bit too soon and skipped off the top of the glove and off the forehead of the mask. Now a runner in scoring position in a 3 1 count. Round ball. Knocked down. Thomas stays with it, but it's too late. Couldn't find it initially, and that cost him the out. Pearson's going to reach. Tough break right there. You figured Thomas would be able to knock that down and get the out at first base, but when he could not figure out where it was, had a tough time. It kind of checked up on him a little bit. No chance to catch Pearson. I mean, an error on Thomas, and that will be the final batter that Tumis will face. Pitching change here. Longhorns will go back to their bullpen. We'll go with a new pitcher when we come back. Back here at Minute Maid Park, UT has gone to the bullpen again. One of those big right arms that Pierce likes to use at the end of ball games is Grant Fontenot. He is in here to try and keep this game right where it's at. He's thrown in four and two-thirds innings, has seven strikeouts, two walks, nothing else pretty much across the board. What's interesting about Fontenot is he redshirted at LSU. So pitching against a former school that he attended, he was the number one prospect coming out of high school in Louisiana. But eventually had to pitch at McLennan Community College for a year before transferring to LSU and redshirting. Now here is a Texas Longhorn facing his former college. Yeah, he was in that first class for Jay Johnson at LSU. Started at LSU in 2022. Now it is third year as the head coach of the Tigers. Well, Fontenot didn't pitch for Jay. Now going against the Tigers as he'll face Jared Jones with the runners on first and third and one out. The Longhorns will shift Jones on the left side of the infield. Three infielders on the left side. Pitch missing in. One and oh. Jones one for two with a double, a run scored, and a walk. Trying to add to this three nothing lead as he bats here with runners on the corners and one out. That ball crushed deep to right field. Forget about it. Three run shot off the bat of Jared Jones. And just like that, it doubles the LSU lead to six to nothing.
The thunder has showed up this evening for the LSU Tigers, and they are pumped. Home run number five on the season for Jones. RBIs 12, 13, and 14. Both team leads. That ball was absolutely destroyed going the other way as Jones stands up on it. Joe Burrow giving it his best effort. Couldn't come up with it. But a three run jack. Burrow went like two rows in that jump. Here's Steven Miles. Jefferson out there trying to lay out and make the catch. <laughs> it was quite an impressive effort by that <laughs> really fan. Was. Now Milan fouls went out of play. It's 0 and 1. The chance of LSU ring throughout Minute Maid Park as part of 24,927 that showed up tonight. It's the biggest single event crowd in the history of this tournament, which started back in 2001. They had one year where they had one bigger one day where they had a bigger attendance and that was back in 2006 but that year the college classic shared the date with Astros Fan Fest so they counted everybody oh nice that showed up for Fan Fest <laughs> and the college classic together so this is just a, a single day single event standalone new record for attendance. And LSU is putting on a show for a majority of those Tiger fans that have shown up to put that number up. And there are rumors that tomorrow could break yeah. it again. Hey, makes our job that much more fun when people show up. It's a lot of fun here tonight for Tiger fans, not so much for the burnt orange Longhorn fans. Milan with a 1 2 count. He's walked twice, scored a run, and popped up. Rarely leaves his own, just like his idol Alex Bregman as he takes that one off the plate 2 and 2. Bregman was a huge influence and role model. He always wanted to play at LSU. Head coach Jay Johnson has known about this kid since seventh grade. As the freshman takes one up three and two. There haven't been too many players coming out of New Mexico, but the couple that we do know of now, obviously Alex, we have watched for a long time. If they keep building them like that, you're going to see more and more schools maybe go take a peek out there in New Mexico. Kind of gritty. I like it. <laughs> That was with a T, not D. <laughs> Can work both ways. <laughs> Just a ball player. They're excited about what they have in this second baseman. Starting his eighth game, he's played in nine of the ten for LSU. Fouls went away. It's still three and two. So Jared Jones takes a three nothing game and doubles it with a three run home run to right field. Jones now with five bombs on the year and ten games played. Three two hit to the left side fielded nicely there by Powell who makes the play on Milan for the final out of the inning. But a big four spot. Excuse me. That's only the second out of the inning. Four runs have scored in the inning, just two outs here in the seventh inning as Fontenot gets his first out out of the bullpen. Yeah, Jones, a team leader in home runs. Now has 14 RBIs on the season as well. I mean, that was no doubt going to the opposite field. It was well struck. Both home runs have been well beyond wall scrapers here for LSU this inning. Here's Mac Bingham. Bingham 0 for 2 is drawn a walk. So three of those runs of the four this inning have been charged to the freshman Easton Tumas. Two of them will be earned, and then the last one will be charged to Fontenot, the home run hitter. Jerry Jones. One and one the count. Bingham went to Torrey Pines High School in San Diego before attending Arizona for four years. Couple of those years, Jay Johnson was the head coach. That one's wide, two and one. Slowly hit. It's going to be a tough play. Powell charges, gloves, throws off balance, and that'll be 
probably ruled an infield hit for Bingham. Powell didn't have much of a chance on that short dribbler. Now Bingham just got on top of a looked like a slider, just kind of pounded it in the dirt. As well as Powell's been swinging the bat, he has had some tough chances down there at third base on some slow rollers. Well, Braswell two for three tonight, couple of runs batted in. LSU six runs on eight hits, two home runs in the seventh inning. Longhorns have been held to no runs on three hits. A stellar outing by the LSU starter Luke Holman in his third career appearance for the Tigers after two years at Alabama. Next pitch misses one and one. Earlier today here in the College Classic it was a crazy first game between UH and Texas State game went back and forth. All the way into the bottom half of the ninth inning Texas State would tie it with a leadoff pinch hit home run and then win it on a walk off home run in the bottom of the tenth. There's a strike. UH had the early lead Texas State came back and looked like they were in control then UH came back to tie it. And take the lead themselves before Texas State tied it again in the ninth and won it in the tenth. Then the second game was also a come from behind win. As Louisiana got on top of Vanderbilt three to nothing, but Vandy stormed back to win that game seven to four. Tonight it's ball clubs here. Oh, really good games. I mean, they both yeah. they both went down to the wire. Even a three run game, they had the bases loaded. Louisiana did in their best hitter. The shortstop yep. the barge was at the plate. Good point. This ball in the center field playable. Gasparino broke back. Now he has to come in. Instead, it's the right fielder who had a fine jump on it, Max Ballou, who makes the catch for the final out of the inning. But a big four spot for LSU. The Tigers on two home runs lead this game six nothing. The Texas Children's Houston Open returns to spring to the spring on March 28th through March 31st. Get your tickets to see the top PGA Tour players compete at Memorial Park Golf Course. To get your tickets, go to tchouopen.com slash tickets. Nate Ackenhausen still out there for LSU as we play into the bottom half of the seventh inning. Seventh inning stretch time here at Mid-Maid Park and deep in the heart of Texas. Had everybody on their feet as usual. As we head to that seventh inning, it'll be Kimball Schusler with his second 
at bat of the night. Schusler came in in the fourth inning, place of Ryland Galvan. Galvan, this ball hit well, yeah. deep to left field. The Longhorns are on the board. Kimball Schusler hits his first home run of the season and gives the Longhorn fans something to cheer about. Six to one game on a home run off the scoreboard, off the. Wall there beyond the Crawford boxes and left. That was well struck. Yeah, he tried to put a hole in the Landry signage out there in left field above the Crawford boxes. That was an absolute laser over the Crawford boxes off the bat of Schusler. Did a good job getting on those legs. We talked about the UT catchers coming into this game, both hitting 500. Just adding another dent to the signs out there in left field. Pretty good feeling for the young man. Schusler missed last year, had a finger injury, and eventually would need surgery after transferring from Texas A&M. It's his second career home run, hit one in 2022. Now Max Ballou will bat. So the lefty Ackenhausen gives one up to the right hand hitting Schusler. Now Ballou, a lefty on lefty. Casey Gorba waits on deck. Pitch, big swing, no contact. Ballou has popped up to third and struck out. Luke Holman struck out everybody in this Longhorn lineup, with the exception of Peyton Powell, who had all three hits on the night for Texas before that home run by Kimball Schusler. And a miss. Ballou goes down on strike. So Ackenhausen has struck out both lefties he has faced. And that's the first out of the seven. Nice little slider there to get Ballou swinging. Ackenhausen has got his fastball between 91 and topping out at 93. Facing Casey Borba, the DH freshman, takes a strike. Borba can also play corner infield, first and third. He's voted the best high school third baseman in the Cal Southern section last year in his senior year. Getting start number six, excuse me, start number three in a Texas Longhorn uniform playing in his fifth game. He's three for 13 in his young collegiate career. The take on a pitch down, two and two. Started out at Eastern Oklahoma State College. Ackenhausen did spend a summer league in the Appy League pitching for Bluefield. Swing and a miss. That's three strikeouts of the four batters Ackenhausen has faced. And the all true outcome outing three strikeouts and a home run allowed. Sliders worked for the last two hitters. Bottom just kind of drops out of it. Ackenhausen last year defeated Tennessee Vols in a CWS College World Series elimination game. That was his first LSU start. Worked six innings, didn't give up a run, four hits, seven strikeouts, didn't walk anybody. He eliminated Tennessee on June 20th of last year. Actually beat Texas in that 3 0. Tiger win in Austin last year. He went three and a third shutout innings last year against Texas, allowed just one hit. One walk and struck out four. It was the winning pitcher out of the bullpen. O'Dowd swings through that pitch. Jack O'Dowd has struck out and flied out to right. The count's one and two. Texas just needs to find a way to get guys on base. 
Try and create a little bit of traffic and then get a big swing, but it's been a lot of strikeouts. Oh man, that got Neil right in the neck, throat. And he jumped up and the ball got underneath the mask. Brady Neal, we checked on here. Now he was originally going down to block it, but when the ball jumped, he kind of jumped with it and it opened up that area. Right in the throat. Mm. He's down on that knee and he's anticipating the ball down, but as soon as he has to elevate up, it sneaks underneath, caught the collarbone or just right in the throat. We've already seen the Longhorns lose their starting catcher tonight. Galvan had her. Thumb issue it looked like on his catching hand, his left hand. Looks like he was going to hang in there. That's yeah, that has nothing to do with the technique of the catcher. He did a good job of going down because when you go down to block, you would tuck that chin into your chest to be able to block that area. But when that ball took that crazy hop well out in front of home plate, it just found its way into that crease. Tough kid going to stay behind the plate. Keep taking a pounding back there. There. Hey, when you got two other guys that are yeah, great catchers, right? you, <laughs> you want to stay in there. You got this is my spot, boys. You got Hayden Travinsky and you've got Alex Malazzo. There's a nice inning for Akinaz. And yes, he gave up the home run, but he strikes out the next three after that solo shot. That's now six to one. Back here at Minute Maid Park, matchup between the LSU Tigers and the Texas Longhorns. It's been dominated by some big swings from LSU, putting them ahead six to one. And much to the, to the delight of a majority of this crowd wearing the purple and gold. As UT will go back to their bullpen, they will go to freshman Hudson Hamilton, another local product out of Spring, Texas, went to Grand Oaks High School. He's had an opportunity to pitch a couple of times against Houston Christian and St. John's. And a couple of gave up a couple of hits and had three strikeouts against HCU, Lance Berkman's ball club. Had a walk and a strikeout. In his most previous outing on the 27th against St. St. John's. So he'll get the top of the LSU lineup. Not easy for any pitcher, especially if Freshman appearing in just his third collegiate game. We got Paxton Kling and then Tommy White, who hit a majestic home run to left center his last time up. And then Brady Neal, the top three hitters in the LSU lineup. Hudson is pitcher number five. LeBaron Johnson Jr. started. Put a lot of pitches on LeBaron in three innings plus two batters. And Tanner Witt came in for two innings. Easton Tumas for an inning and a third. Grant Fontenot. 
at the final two outs last inning and now Hudson Hamilton taking over in the eighth inning Hamilton facing Kling who is one for four with an infield hit and a stolen base and we have a new second baseman for the Texas Longhorns D Kennedy the freshman out of Fort Worth has taken over for Jack O'Dowd at second first pitch is a strike to Paxton Kling 0 and 1. Thing flight out to deep left his last time up. This ball hit high in the air to right field, sending Max Ballou back, but he's in front of the warning track and waits for it and puts it away. Four out number one. Go back and take a look at that Tommy White home run. A bit of a hanging slider up there, and he just opened up and unleashed the fury. Plenty of carry on that late life, getting up there by the Astros home run pump. Second home run of the season for Tommy White, or Tommy Tanks, as they like to call him in Baton Rouge. Kind of set things off in that inning for Louisiana State. It's a leadoff home run. Big rip of that pitch, fouls it back. Yeah, he doesn't hold back much, does he? No. Just kind of lets it go. Really gets down on those legs and just unleashes. That ball hit hard, but on one hop, D. Kennedy, the new second baseman, is there. And the freshman makes the play for the second out. Tommy now one for five on the night. Well, two outs, base is cleared. Brady Neal, the number three hitter, catcher who took a pitch in the dirt off the neck last inning, staying in the game. 0 for 4 with three strikeouts tonight. He takes one at the knees for a strike 0 and 1. LSU has not announced their starter for tomorrow. I have a few to choose from. Thatcher Hurd had pitched last Friday. Could be a candidate. Gage Jump or Javin Coleman. Javin Coleman. A couple of lefties could be in the mix. So we'll see who Jay Johnson goes with tomorrow against Louisiana. Again, they have the nightcap game. And from what we're being told, 24,927. A new record as a standalone event here. At the College Classic could be eclipsed tomorrow night. Big crowds expected for both second and third games Texas State, Texas, and Louisiana LSU. 2 1 bounces in there, 3 and 1. Neil's a sophomore. Five of his six hits have been extra bases, two home runs. And excuse me, two doubles and three home runs. And he's bidding for another extra base hit on a 3 1 pitch and bounces one into the corner. He has seven hits on the year, six of them for extra bases. That's why he's slugging close to 900 coming into this one, his first hit of the night. Pretty good job of just tomahawking this one. Got a pitch up in the zone. He's been trying to get on top of some of those pitches throughout the course of the day. Just hasn't been able to until this point. So Hayden Trevinsky will get it at bat. Trevinsky's fifth plate appearance of the night as LSU will go to a pinch runner here. Pinch runner for the neck of Brady Neal. Zeb Ruddle. Pinch running at second base. You ever had to ice your throat? <laughs> Sounds terrible. I mean, externally, not internally, Todd. Because I could ice it with a beverage after the game, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that didn't look comfortable. Not at all. But he wanted another at bat. Good thing. And he doubles. Yep, took it out on the baseball. Now he can go and 
take care of whatever bruise may show up there tomorrow. Hayden Travinsky with a 2 0 count. So we'll see if Hayden or Alex Malazzo gets a start tomorrow behind the plate. Brady starting Wednesday against Rice and again tonight. We might mix it up tomorrow. We mentioned LSU with those three catchers. Jay Johnson said he has never, ever had close to the depth he's had at catching this year. He thinks it's the best trio of catchers anywhere in the country. One missing in four pitch walk. So after two quick outs for Hudson Hamilton, the freshman allows a double and now a walk. And he will face Jake Brown. Brown Brown came on as a pinch runner for Josh Pearson last inning and stayed in the game in right field. So Brown gets his first at bat of the night. Jake Brown is a freshman out of Sulphur High School in Louisiana. Brown has started five games in his freshman year. He's seven for 20, hitting 350. That one's going to skip away from Schusler. That'll advance each runner 90 feet. Pinch runner Ruddle goes to third and Travinsky in the second. Hamilton's got to try and find a way to regroup. He's going to get a visit from Coach Pierce to try and encourage that. Coach Pierce, the pitching coach and the head coach this season. So he's got all the mound visits covered. Maybe Jay Johnson should do that and he won't lose a pitching coach. <laughs> It was kind of funny about it. He either said I'm doing a really good job of exposing these guys and, and kind of branding them and giving them the opportunity to move on or that either that or they hate working with me. <laughs> yeah, he said he, I'm either the best or the worst to work with. <laughs> three pitching coaches in his three years at LSU, but reunited with Nate Yeski. He was with him in Arizona. I would imagine if you are a college coach and you're given the opportunity to be a head coach in the SEC, it would be tough to turn down that opportunity for a lot of reasons, financially and for your legacy. Talking about Wes? Yep. Yeah, Wes Johnson. Got a great opportunity out there in Georgia. It's a little mid count visit, a one on one count to Jake Brown. Brown's a 6'2", 194-pound freshman. And freshman on freshman here. As Hudson Hamilton misses wide, 2-1. Two and two, two and one. Jake is a good-looking hitter. Young freshman, he's got some pretty good power going the other way. The Texas defense is shading him that way in the outfield. Got a pitch away trying to go that way with it. Brown was the 2023 Gatorade Baseball Player of the Year in the state of Louisiana. Two way player, and there is a ground ball to the left side. Glove there by the third baseman, Powell. And Peyton Powell makes another play at third. Two stranded by Hudson Hamilton. We head to the bottom of the eighth. It is 6 1 LSU.
Bottom half of the eighth inning, LSU six, Texas one. LSU jumped in front two to nothing on a bases loaded two RBI single by Michael Braswell. That was in the fourth inning. And they added four on two home runs in the seventh. A solo shot lead off by Tommy White and then a three run real separator by Jared Jones. It turned a three nothing game to a six nothing game. It's now six to one as the Longhorns bat here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Texas has its lone run on a solo shot. Well struck line drive home run by Kimball Schusler to lead off the seventh. Nate Ackenhausen back out there for more. He's gone an inning and a third so far. He has allowed that solo home run and struck out the other four hitters. As he faces Will Gasparino, who has struck out twice tonight, both times swinging. Gasparino misses that slider down and in. It's one and two. Pretty much just been fastball slider from Ackenhausen. 92 93 with his fastball, but that slider's been very effective getting some swing and miss overall tonight. 16 strikeouts of Longhorns for the Tiger pitching staff. That's pretty impressive. 16 of the 21 outs. Could have been 17 right there with that slider trying to creep back onto the plate. Wanted it down and in, but it almost ended up being a backdoor slider. Swing and a miss. Gasparino goes down for the third time tonight. Five strikeouts for Ackenhausen and 17 total in the game for LSU pitching. There's a lot of swing and miss for the Longhorns trying to figure out Holman and Ackenhausen now. Five strikeouts for Ackenhausen. Through an inning and two thirds. Ackenhausen's two outings this year have been three innings and three and two thirds. And he struck out six in both of those outings. His career high was in that start last year that we told you about last inning when he eliminated Tennessee on June 20th with six shutout innings, striking out seven as a starting pitcher. We have a new third baseman into the game for LSU. Tommy White tonight is over. Tommy Tanks hitting one up at the home run pump. And Ben Nippold has come in to replace him at third. So Nippold, uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. Went to Des Moines, CC, and then VCU before. On to LSU as the new third baseman for the Tigers. Counts one and two on Jared Thomas. Thomas had been red hot coming into this game, carrying a 581 batting average, but tonight he has been. Held down by LSU's combination of Luke Coleman. He hasn't faced Ackenhausen before, but Luke Coleman got him in three at bats with two strikeouts and an 0 for three tonight. Pitch just a little bit up. It looked like it was on the plate. That was much better. Tough night for Thomas as the sophomore takes a called third strike. He is the second out of the inning. Six strikeouts for Ackenhausen. All of his outs have been via the strikeout. It's just been amazing to watch Luke Holman, the starter, strikeout 12, and now you're watching Ackenhausen strike out six Longhorns. But everything has been pinpoint. If they've missed with the pitch, they've been able to come back and make the adjustment and make a better pitch to get those strikeouts. So it has been an incredibly tough night for the Texas Longhorn hitters just trying to figure out the sequence or just getting a mistake out over the plate that they can get a hold of. There's only been one mistake. And it was the pitch to Schusler that he shot out to left field for the only run in this game. Schusler has the home run to give Texas their lone run and all the other hits have been from Peyton Powell who digs in there now. Powell the third baseman has made all the plays at third and he's three for three tonight for the Longhorns with two doubles and a single. Texas with four hits, three of them from this guy. 
Now facing the lefty Ackenhausen, lefty on lefty. Hits the ball the other way. The shortstop Braswell off balance throw on Great the money. Play. Really nice play by Braswell the third, and Ackenhausen has a one, two, three, eight. We head to the ninth, six one LSU. Here's how we line things up tomorrow. It starts in the morning at 11 o'clock with number nine Vanderbilt trying to go to 2 and 0 on the weekend. Take it on the local team, the Houston Cougars. And at 3 o'clock, Texas State will take on these 15th ranked Texas Longhorns. That'll be at 3 o'clock. Then we'll finish it off with Louisiana and number three LSU tomorrow night. Expecting big crowds all day tomorrow for the Astros Foundation College Classic Day 2 tomorrow night. Impressive jacket. Strong, quite strong, as you like to say. I feel like you could wear that to uh, the Lady Tigers basketball game and get away with it. <laughs> New pitcher for UT is going to be Andre Duplantier. He's done quite a few innings for these Texas Longhorns. So 58 total innings for the Longhorns three and two thirds this season he's given up a couple of earned runs five strikeouts and three walks and three and two thirds. Jared Jones was the real separator in this game as you look at the numbers for Duplantier the second. Right here in Humble Texas is where he's from in his fourth year pitching for the Longhorns Jones hitting a three run home run turning. What had been a relatively tight game for six and a third innings into a six run LSU lead. Gave them some breathing room. Tommy White made it three nothing with a solo home run to start that inning. And then Jones with the big separator with a three run shot to right. It's also doubled and walked and sends this one high and foul out of play. It's two and two. Here is that big swing going to the opposite field. That was a blast. Ten rows up. You're right though that was a huge blow to this game for the Texas Longhorns watching that ball sail into the right field seats for a three run bomb and this one's drilled too. Jared Jones gets into one all the way back and off the warning track and into the bullpen for an automatic double. Jones with eight total bases, nine total bases tonight, two doubles, a home run, and a walk as he drills that one into right center field. He's making himself comfortable right here at Minute Maid Park. I tell you what, he is a strong human. There's not much movement in that swing, barely even a foot or barely even a stride. A lot of that is just creating a little bit of momentum going through that baseball as he has shown some opposite field juice. Technically eight total bases with that walk and on base four times in a row struck out his first time up. But you're right not a huge stride just yeah, it's kind of quiet for a big guy it doesn't really wind up get that big leg kick or have a huge load with the hands kind of setting back. 
He just kind of gets in a little bit of a rhythm, rocks to the backside, and then just throws that barrel through the zone. He has supreme power, and he has showed it off tonight with those two doubles and a home run. Here's Steven Milam fouling one away. That's now 10 hits for LSU. Jones has three of them. Michael Braswell with a couple of hits. Travinsky's also been on base four times with a double and three walks. And down two and one. I would imagine Coach Johnson's pretty happy to see this lineup scoring some runs. He's a guy that will move guys all over that lineup, and he'll move guys in and out of that lineup too. But they've been winning some ball games, maybe not with the kind of thunder that they want, but tonight they've gotten it. And if they get Tommy White going too, Ooh. watch out. And it looks like they're going to try and finish this game with just two pitchers used because nobody's warming up in the bullpen. That feels pretty amazing to come into this tournament, play this kind of competition, and be able to beat the Texas Longhorns only using two pitchers. That's what LSU is going to try to accomplish tonight, it appears, with nobody warming up. Milan grounds one to the right side. Freshman D. Kennedy retires the freshman Stephen Milam on the play. Jones moves to third, so a productive out for out number one. And Mac Bingham will be the batter. Bingham an infield hit and three at bats has also drawn a walk. Plantier, the second, was at Summer Creek High School. Out of Bumble, and he was team MVP, pitcher of the year, also second and third baseman. And he was a two way player his freshman year at Texas. Got a couple of starts at third base, in addition to eight relief appearances on the mound. And then missed the 2021 season after undergoing surgery. And since then has been strictly a pitcher. Well, oh, check that. They're still giving him some at bats here or there. He hasn't had an official at bat since 2020. That one's off the plate 2 0. Oh. This is his fourth appearance of the year. Pitch against San Diego, Houston, Christian, and St. John's. 2 0 count to Bingham. That one's wide, 3 0. Having a tough time finding the strike zone in this outing against LSU. 13 pitches, 7 out of the zone. So while LSU has used just two pitchers, Duplantier, the second, is the sixth pitcher for Texas. There's a strike, 3 and 1. On the ground to third, they're going to come home with this play. Hung up between third and home is Jared Jones. He is tagged out by Schusler for the second out of the inning. Jones stayed in the rundown long enough for Bingham to get to second, so there's two outs and a runner on scoring position. Good play to keep a run off the board. Like you said, Powell's had himself a busy evening here with the hits and plenty of ground ball opportunities here gets that throw to Schusler and Schusler chases down Jones does allow that runner to get into second base there's a called strike it's 0 and 1 yeah Powell has had a great night defensively and at the plate one of the few highlights for the Longhorns along with Kimball Schusler's home run
David Pierce has a thing with his current team and he just he says he loves the makeup of this team. He loves the culture that has developed around his program but they do a thing called tell your story and guys that are a few years into their Longhorn career talk about what it was like as a freshman coming on through and a guy like Peyton Powell went from a you know barely playing his first few years to last year becoming Big 12 all Big 12 and now this year being one of if not the best offensive player on the team and and he had to wait his turn and basically you know that's what coach wants is is Pierce wants these guys to say hey I, this is what it was like I was, I was a freshman I, I didn't know when I was going to play and, and here he is succeeding in his final couple of years. Yeah, Coach Pierce had really good things to say about him. Obviously, the bat to ball skills, he can maneuver the baseball around to get those knocks, but he's turned into a leader on this team. And it's going to be kind of interesting to watch these universities over the next couple of years as you start to kind of filter through some of those COVID seasons. You're going to see those five year seniors yep. or those graduate guys kind of move on. And if you start to look at these rosters, especially LSU and UT, I mean, you're starting to see some sophomores and freshmen getting those at bats because they do need that experience to create their own story. But there are some really good stories out there. After a Braswell walk, Paxton Kling grounds one to shortstop, and Jalen Flores makes the play to end the inning. So we head to the bottom of the ninth. Longhorns down six to one. We head to the bottom of the ninth of game three of day one of the Astros Foundation College Classic. LSU has led this game throughout two run fourth inning four run. Seventh inning and Nate Ackenhausen is going to try and close out this game. He would qualify for a save if he finishes off this inning you have to go at least three effective innings he did allow a run but he has been pretty effective he has retired everybody but that solo home run he is. Face eight batters retired seven. There is a little action going in the LSU bullpen just in case Ackenhausen gets in some trouble as Jalen Flores, a number three hitter, is the batter. Flores has struck out three times today. The LSU Tigers pitching staff, two guys actually, Luke Holman and Nate Ackenhausen, have combined for 18 strikeouts through eight innings. Man. 18 of the 24 outs have been via the strikeout as Flores is down on the count here one and two. Ackenhausen is just doing it with fastball slider. But yeah 18 strikeouts pretty impressive from LSU Jay Johnson the head coach of LSU has got to be extremely pleased if he's able to get through this game with just using two pitchers. One two pitch is a line drive fair ball down the left field line Jalen Flores has extra bases as a Longhorn shortstop in the second base with a leadoff double here in the ninth. It was a really good swing from Jalen Flores to go down on the legs and get that ball and yank it into left field. 
lanky shortstop. Showing some ability to drop the barrel on that pitch and yank it into left field corner. Trying to rally do something a little bit late here. In Texas. The Longhorns are looking for Porter Brown's bat to get going. He takes a call strike. It's 0 and 1. One of the things that stuck out for me when Coach Pierce talked about Porter Brown said he's a very good ball player. Another guy that has bat to ball skills. Uh, hit into some hard luck today. Hit the ball hard. Oh, and then he finds it right there. Beautiful. It all evens out. It's amazing. But I was just going to say, he said he's a very heady, cerebral type guy. And sometimes you can think yourself into slumps when you try and overmanage that swing. And then all you do is check swing yourself a base hit. Maybe that gets things going for him. Yeah, check swing, base hit for Porter Brown. I should say he is cerebral. He is a got a neuroscience degree from TCU, so that's <laughs> pretty good. That's pretty cerebral. <laughs> but he's got a base hit here on a check swing. So now all of a sudden the Longhorns with nobody out have runners on first and third. And Kimball Schusler, who hit one out against Ackenhausen his last time up, will be the batter. Had the catcher who's into the game now. That's Alex Malazzo go out to talk to the pitcher Ackenhausen. Wasn't sure if that was a stall tactic or not, but they're going to keep Ackenhausen in here to face Schusler again. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It was a stall tactic. There you go. Here comes Jay Johnson. He is going to the umpire here, Seth Buckminster. And we'll probably make a pitching change. So first and third, nobody out. Schusler hit a home run against Ackenhausen last time up, will not face him for a second time. There was a righty warming up in the bullpen for LSU. And it appears Johnson is going to stall as long as he can before he has to make the call. And now he's already made the call. We'll have a pitching change when we come back. LSU is going to go to their third pitcher of the evening. It is going to be number 40 right hander Fidel Uyoa. I got that right and nailed it out of Lodi California he spent the last couple of seasons pitching for the San Joaquin Delta College up there in Stockton California. This will be his fourth appearance with the LSU Tigers four and a third innings five strikeouts with one walk. He's yet to give up an earned run. He's only given up two hits. In that four and a third innings pitched, looking to close this game out for the LSU Tigers with runners at the corners and nobody out. Uyoa was at San Joaquin Delta and he was tipped off, which Jay Johnson by the Delta College head coach Reed Peters and catching coach Brian Condro. I said, You got to see this kid. Called him last fall. 
So he sent Josh Jordan out there. Jordan saw him and said, Coach, we need to get him. And Yoa committed right away to LSU while at a different recruiting visit. So here he is trying to close out this game. It's six to one. Kimball Schusler tries to check his swing and goes too far. It's 0 2. Clock violation right there. I think that'll be the first ball. It is one and two. Our buddy Jesus Ortiz did a nice article today on Yoa about his work ethic coming from his dad and how his parents work so hard to try and create an opportunity for him to excel in athletics. And here he is pitching for the defending national champions, trying to close out a game. One and two, the count on Schusler. Still nobody out in the ninth in this five run game. Puts the ball in play down the right field line. It's slicing and into the fifth row of the stands. Luke Coleman for five and two thirds innings. Lefty Nate Ackenhausen for two and a third. And now Uyoa coming on in the ninth inning. Down and the count's full on Schusler. Max Blue waiting on deck. Longhorn still need two more runners to bring the tying run to the plate, but nobody out in the ninth. Call third strike. Yoa with a big pitch there on a 3 2 delivery for the first out of the ninth. Blue 93 past him. A lot of off speed, and then all of a sudden with two strikes, that fastball gets past you pretty quick. That is 19 strikeouts for LSU pitching tonight. Here's Max Blue, right fielder, looking for his first hit 0 for 3. Couple of strikeouts. This one popped high in the air that will not score the run. Steven Milan, the second baseman, calls everybody off, puts it away for out number two. The runners on first and third with nobody out. And Fidel Uyoa, Uyoa is trying to close out the door. It's not giving me enough time to talk about his mustache. <laughs> Strong stash. Yeah, that's a show stash in D1 baseball right there. Up to Casey Borba, the freshman DH, to keep the game alive for Texas. This ball drilled to center field deep. Back goes Kling. He's near the wall. He will leap and he'll miss handle the ball as he crashes into the wall. A great attempt by Kling as he crashed into the wall. Had it momentarily, but that's a two run double for Borba. And it's a six to three game. An incredible attempt by Kling and almost ended the game in spectacular fashion. Incredible effort by Kling out there in center field. That wall was continuing to get closer and closer as a freshman Casey Borba put a charge into this one out there into left center field. Deep part of this ballpark playing elevated hit off the heel of the glove. Just unable to hold on. Late life from the Longhorns with that blast. Those two runs go against Nate Ackenhausen. Now a little meeting on the mound as Nate Yeski goes out to talk to his right-hander. This will be the first plate appearance 
for D. Kennedy for the Longhorns. Kennedy came in for Jack O'Dowd, so Kennedy will be up there as a right hand hitter against the righty Uyoa. I think this is who Yoa's game. Nobody's warming up right now in the LSU bullpen, so just a little discussion here. Give him a little breather after that two RBI double. To slow things down a little bit with two outs. That conversation basically said, "Get your breath and finish off this game right here with this guy." The Kennedy went to Preston, Preston Wood Christian in Fort Worth. He's a freshman. Really like his athleticism, electric type player. Gets his first at bat tonight. Longhorns still need one more runner on base. If they were to bring the tying run to the plate. First pitch a strike, 0 and 1. Kennedy, three for 12 in his freshman season. Going to get a pinch runner here. Another Duplantier. And yeah, this is Jaden Duplantier. So Jaden coming out to run for Borba assumes that DH spot. Yoa delivers down 1 1. D. Kennedy also running back a couple of years at Prestonwood Christian. He's made four starts so far in the year in the first eight games for UT. And he catches the outside edge. It's 1 and 2. Third strike, LSU wins it six to three. Uyoa picks up the final out, getting a strikeout. Why not? They struck out 20 batters tonight 12 by Holman, six by Ackenhausen, two by Uyoa. And the defending champions win this game six to three, Blummer. It was a great game. It was well pitched. We knew it was going to be exciting from the get go from these two powerhouse teams, but eventually it turned out to be the reigning national champions in the LSU Tigers who put together some great at bats early on, forced LeBaron Johnson out of the game, and then they went on the attack against the Texas bullpen. And once they finally got some thunder out of that lineup, that's when the runs came across the board for LSU. So a great game all the way around for the LSU Tigers. A long day of baseball comes to a close. The Texas State Bobcats winners in extra innings, eight to seven over the UH Cougars. It was Vanderbilt seven, Louisiana four in tonight's final. In the final game, the LSU Tigers win it by the final score of six to three. That'll do.